All right. Good evening, everybody. We are back to Crusader Kings 2, um, as is our way on Mondays. Or at least a Paradox again, grand strategy game. We have been enjoying Crusader Kings 2 recently. Enjoyment, of course, being a very relative term, because I lost a whole bunch of stuff last month. Or not last month, last uh, session. It wasn't last week, uh, as it was... Uh, Remembrance Day in Canada, or rather at least the day off, uh, which um, so the day off that they give us for Remembrance Day. And uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the small change in schedule, I'm, I've actually not been very disciplined at keeping myself to this, so I should do a slightly better job of it in the future. Um, but uh, basically, um, whenever there is a... One of the things that kind of came up in terms of broadcasting for me was that I noticed I never really took any holidays. And in one sense, you're sort of like, oh yes, poor you. It must be so hard to play video games uh, for hours on end in front of a bunch of people. Uh, to which I say, yes, it actually is. Um, most of my departures from streaming have usually been involuntary ones. Either I moved across the country, uh, or the power went out, and on occasion uh, there have been some times when I've just felt a lot of stress or otherwise um, just general, uh, I don't know, grimness about streaming. And I don't particularly like ending or stopping casts for that way because it doesn't give people something to plan, or plan around, um, and that's not healthy for me. Um, so one of the ways I wanted to try and give a counterweight to that, which is if there is a day when I won't be at work, um, then the plan is to have that be a proper day of rest, which also includes streaming. Um, now, there's a counterbalance to the counterbalance, which is I will also uh, take the opportunity to, you know, maybe do an extended stream or a stream on another day. So, for instance, if there's a Saturday and I feel up to it, maybe I'll do a cast then. And that's sort of what happened with uh, Surviving Mars. We wound up doing seven, almost eight hours of that. And that was tremendously enjoyable. Um, I don't like announcing plans for things before I'm actually ready to do them, and I have not recorded an episode yet, but given how much I enjoy Surviving Mars, and given how... I wouldn't necessarily say overwhelmingly successful, for, but those who enjoy it really do enjoy, uh, seem to enjoy it. Given the fact that the vodcasts for um, The Elder Scrolls seem to be so popular, uh, I have decided that I will, uh, I'll cover Surviving Mars that way as well. Uh, and that'll be interesting for me because it's an example of a game where, you know, it's a little bit more, it's not exactly a strategy game, but it's a little bit more like Crusader Kings 2 or, uh, or other games like that, which I feel a bit more comfortable with. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not I can get, uh, I don't know, I think it'll be interesting to see whether or not I can get the same kind of, um, uh, response or material out of out of um, a game like uh, Surviving Mars. Anyways, uh, Crusader Kings is, is the game on now, so let's talk about that. And how are you doing, Captain Shield? Good to see you. Um, for those of you who are interested, the new DLC is out. Uh, it is uh, <laughs> Holy Fury. Sorry, I'm tripping over. Now, normally the game does go on sale. Uh, I don't believe it is on sale, or if it did go on sale... I mean, it did go on sale on the 16th, I think. Um, anyways, it is... Um, it's the, You can get the game now, you can get the game at its normal price. Although I believe there are some discounts for, um, uh, for things like the starter pack and that, so... I know there's like a collection. I'm looking at the page right now. It's 15% off on that. Um, I enjoy this game tremendously. Uh, so the base price for it is $43.99. Uh, that's Canadian. Obviously, if you live somewhere else, uh, your regional equivalent will be a bit different. If you want everything, uh, if you have to have all of the DLC, 
Uh, usually the new DLC will be somewhere around the $20 range. Uh, Holy Fury is currently $22.79. Uh, if you are interested in some of the older uh, DLC, it really depends on what you are looking for. So uh, to give you an example, uh, some of the first ones I got were things like uh, the Sword of Islam and Legacy of Rome, which are 1099 and 549 respectively. Um, but then you can get things that expand the map or give you older uh, time uh, timelines, things like the Old Gods or uh, Charlemagne, and both of those are $16.99. So it sort of depends in terms of what you're looking for. It's an excellent game, and what I do strongly recommend is that you pick up the DLC that you personally find interesting. Um, so for instance, if you're interest, interested in, um, in the East, if you're interested in China, you can't play China, but you can feel the influence of China in Dra Jade Dragon. But of course, if you like playing in Spain, um, you don't really have a lot of opportunities to interact uh, with it quite the same way. That doesn't mean that there aren't things in Jade Dragon that you, um, you know, that you you won't enjoy. It just means that the real headline features maybe aren't uh, as directly felt. Uh, whereas, of course, it may be very interesting to play the Sword of Islam because, of course, uh, so much of Spain is owned by um, by that faith. So, anyways, um, instead of doing the Pitch. Uh, let's continue on the story of the Adamini family. Uh, I could be better, Captain Shield, but things aren't things aren't terrible, so we'll we'll work with it. Now, for those of you who didn't see it the last time we played, oh, by the way, it is worth mentioning. Um, if that wasn't clear from the uh, from from the. Um, uh, the chat before. I am not playing Holy Fury, uh, and because I am continuing on the save, it actually means that I'm getting none of the benefits from the patch that Paradox just put out. I know some of you may not be crazy about that decision, um, but I have a feeling that probably the majority will be happy to see how we get out of the troubles from last time. So, um, as always, give feedback uh, whether or not you would like to see the latest and the greatest um, material for the game. Um, sometimes that stuff isn't in, under my control anyway, um, because there is a... Basically every decision that I make on the cast is sort of weighted as far as a cost is concerned. Uh, Paradox has been very generous in the past uh, in terms of uh, sort of getting me DLC uh, to cover the game, and it's one of the reasons why I have a, a dedicated Paradox Day. Um, because I would like to sort of respect the fact that they've they've done that. Um, but it's not necessarily something that I should uh, rely on. Uh, it's not necessarily something that, you know, should be taken for granted. And so as a consequence, uh, if you guys really want to see the latest in Crusader Kings, um, that's fine, but that may potentially mean, if I don't have a press key for the game, um, that I'm buying the DLC, which is fine, because normally I'll wind up buying the DLC and the question is more when, um, but that does mean that I'm going to... that cost is made up somewhere else. That means that potentially I don't do some other thing. Um, so for instance, uh, because I got a uh, the deluxe edition of Hearts of Iron 4, uh, I know I'll be getting Man the Guns. Um, now, I wouldn't necessarily be doing that out of an obligation to be given a press key for it. I would do that because I would be interested in it. Um, but of course, the money that got me the deluxe edition that, uh, you know, that translated into my ability to play Man the Guns, obviously, if that goes towards Crusader Kings things, um, again, one is not necessarily better than the other. Um, but there are trade-offs that are faced. And so uh, if you guys give me feedback in terms of the sort of things that you like, that gives me some ideas in terms of where uh, where I can put the money. So anyways, with that throat clearing out of the way, um, let's think a little bit about how we're going to recover. Uh, so we're just starting uh, Duca Dermo of Feruli, uh, member of the Adamini family, uh, still a Duke of Lombardy. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to betray the king and take advantage of our, uh, of our circumstances. Very wealthy individual, which is good news. Um, unfortunately, has not uh, has not produced an heir yet, and we're not ridiculously powerful as far as um, as far as uh, as troops are concerned. But we'll think a little bit about maybe the next few 
some of the next few moves that we might make. So we have some ducal claims. We've got people who owe me a favor, and we've got weak claims, which maybe I don't necessarily want to do. Hey, SCSF, how are you doing? Thank you, Captain Shield. I, that means a lot, actually. Because one of the things I don't... It's a very difficult thing to... Um, to explain to a given audience. I don't particularly like taking myself um, too seriously, but there is a certain point where people will... So one of the reasons why I am very reluctant to do in-character stuff that doesn't involve silly voices is the fact that it's very clear that people, uh, at least some people, don't get um, when it's an act or something along those lines. And I think one of the things that I tend to notice about the way that Twitch works is that people are always very quick to point out the negative. So, for instance, when I'm playing Wolfenstein and I get like 20 headshots in a row, um, and then the next one is a miss, Everybody's going to point out the miss. Nobody says, oh my god, how do you do that? You know, during the, the headshots. They're absolutely going to point out, you know, you suck at this game. Why didn't you get that headshot? Um, and part of that is just, you know what, that's the way this stuff works. And if I don't like it, then that's too bad on me. I'm not owed a... I'm not owed sort of this hero worship. And I actually would rather prefer that uh, streams are not treated that way. I think, again, everybody could sort of deal with a very healthy um, batch of, of, you know, a bit of a reality check and just generally not to be, uh, not to be so, um, you know, not too far up themselves. Uh, but with that in mind, um, I do think there is something to be said about, uh, you know, taking something that's supposed to be fun and lighthearted and like really pushing a narrative of it being like losing control during a game. Um, because that's something that I rather wish people didn't do during games. Um, and so I, that's one of the reasons why I, you know, I'm actually a bit uncomfortable when uh, when people really push that thing. It just generally because it's a, it's a trend in gaming which I dislike. It's one of the reasons why I don't play a lot of... Um, it's one of the reasons I don't play a lot of multiplayer games. So I do appreciate you. Uh, I do appreciate you saying that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As CSF. I mean, it's and again, like I said, I don't. I really do not like the idea. What are my goals in this campaign? Excellent question, uh, as CSF. So the uh, we. As far as a position is concerned, we're actually pretty... We're pretty well situated. Uh, we started off as the Count of Verona, so we now have two duchies uh, under our belt. Um, but unfortunately, due to some mishaps, we wound, up losing, um, we wound up losing the magnum opus. So one of the things that I would like to do is, uh, is uh, write another magnum opus. Now, this is obviously not going to happen with, uh, you know, a learning seven or even eight. Um, but uh, we'll see whether or not we can improve that. So that's a, a short-term goal. Uh, I would like to consolidate my power, uh, so we've more or less got what we want down here. Um, but we we only recently uh, obtained, I believe, we uh, we yanked this out of the hands of a uh, of a rival. So uh, we might try to take um, Crane from Countess uh, Guntrude. Uh, we might instead try to take Istra. Um, but basically, it would be sort of nice to sort of consolidate my position and uh, claim the territories, especially the ones that are sort of on the border, uh, because obviously if the, um, if the Byzantine Empire uh, gets uh, a, little too, uh, a little too jealous of these territories, uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to take them away. Um, I will say I would like to, I, I tend to like to move on my way to king and emperor if I can, 
Uh, Lombardy is obviously a much more difficult uh, area to achieve that with. Uh, not impossible, obviously, because uh, the Holy Roman Empire was never really formed. Um, Charlemagne was actually a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, although, as you can see, the Byzantine Empire is certainly not having any trouble uh, gobbling up some of the tribal lands. So uh, it, it'll definitely, I'll want to make sure that I'm on fairly good relations with them. Um, to uh, to carry on. So I think probably uh, medium term I want to try and uh, and take the kingdom for myself. Um, but one stepping stone towards that is to consolidate my position. Um, and then long term, I don't know, take over as much of the map as we possibly can. We're still only in 885, so we, we still have plenty of time available to us. But uh, one of the main things I wanted to do is it has been a very long time since I've played a continental game. And so uh, I mostly just wanted to see whether or not I can... I, I really wanted to play a game where not everything went my way, uh, and that's clearly happening. Um, so that's, uh, that's enough for me, I suppose. So, um, uh, SCS, uh, sorry, SCSF25's uh, comment actually sort of, it, it's a great little introduction to what I was about to do, which is to consider our position. So my strengths are towards stewardship, so obviously, uh, Clearing out that money that I owe to the money lenders is a, a fairly important goal. Um, I'm in reasonably good. Uh, I'm in reasonably good shape as far as um, as any competition is is concerned. Um, if I want to try and take on uh, or try try and take some of this territory, I need to make sure that I've got a slightly stronger army than I already do. I mean, 1.63 versus my uh, 1.68. I do have a small numerical advantage, but the real drawback here is one, I don't know if he has any, um, uh, well actually I'd probably be going after the king too, so, um, but basically, um, like that's a pretty marginal, um, that's a pretty marginal, uh, sort of, how do I put it? It, it's a it's a marginal gain that I have over or uh, sorry a, a advantage that I have over them and clearly if I sit on my hands and just let the recruitment uh, do its work, I'm going to be in a much stronger position to sort of take what's mine. Um, and then of course this simple idea that I want to pay down uh, my debts uh, is another another fairly important uh, fairly important consideration. Um, I am sort of on my way to just uh, moving, you know, uh, trying to move my um, my uh, my children up the uh, up the chain, trying to raise them and turn them into an heir. Um, so I think probably for the next little while, it's just going to be a bunch of consolidation, both in terms of uh, financial as well as territorial. Panda Player Fifteen says you have returned. Uh, I this sure has been a while, but it's awesome to see you playing one of your favorite games. One of my favorite games too as well, Panda Player. I'm glad that you get a chance to see it. So uh, we are recovering from uh, from the misadventures of the previous uh, session where my magnum opus was burned. Um, but right now it's going to be a little bit more about uh, getting, getting money, getting wealth, ducats, land, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then eventually after my armies get a bit stronger to try and... Um, to try and uh, extend my my reach a little bit as far as uh, as far as my uh, the lands that I, I have under my control. So the, to the glorious Duke uh, Adamero, may you live in harmony and contentment. I have decided to accept your suggestion of a betrothal between Theodorata and Prince Armenbald. Okay, so this fellow wants me dead. Oh, this is, a, I didn't know that there were Jewish heresies. Um, Karaite Judaism is a Jewish movement characterized by the recognition of the Tanakh uh, alone as the supreme legal authority in Jewish religious law and theology. In this, it is distinct from mainstream, uh, mainstream rabbinic, sorry, rabbinic Judaism. Uh, Karaites maintain that all of the divine commandments handed down to Moses by God were recorded in the written Torah without additional oral law or explanation. In game, Karaite Judaism is a heresy of mainstream Judaism. This heresy has no formal head and no special game mechanics. 
So I have a question for you, Panda Player. What makes Crusader Kings 2 your favorite game? Okay, so we won't end. Fair enough. As she's growing older, I can see that uh, Waldera could use some guidance in one of my more experienced areas, stewardship. This is my chance to make an effort for the sake of her education. What can I offer? So, treat all as equals or self-restraint a life of moderation. Yes, we will treat everyone as equals. Okay, I like massive recruitment drives in Verona. How are we doing for our our armies. A little better, but we still have a long way to go. Since I came to Pavia, we have never had a shortage of soldiers reinforcing our troops. They know that fame and fortune await. So that's me being a marshal for my uh, my king rather than, uh, than anything else. Card Maynard of Mainz was given a seat in the College of Cards. A new bird has arrived in the muse, and a new book on the art of writing poetry is in the library. What kind of a man is... Do I, I feel like he is... Well, you know what? He's a pretty wealthy guy, even if he is zealous. Um, he, he, I think he would... I know he looks like he might be the bookish type, but I feel like a wealthy fellow like Adamero. Um, I think he would take the falcon out. You find the diplomacy in this game really engaging? It certainly has one of the most sprawling diplomacy windows of any games that you've played. Hello, Ragnus! Yeah, well, I mean, the real shame here is that my, my normal start time is between 7 and 8, uh, unless it's a Friday, in which case I tend to go a bit later. But I've struggled a bit to, to keep things on time, so this is more a return to, to normal, and I'm going to do my best to keep it that way. But lovely to see you. Actually, sorry, I know you prefer Domi, not Ragnus, so... Lovely to see you, as usual. And uh, Panda Player, I, I agree completely. Um, I actually found this game very difficult to learn. I did it all on stream, though, uh, and it was incredibly rewarding. And I think one of the main reasons why this uh, attracted me so much uh, was exactly what you say. I love this idea, and I, I've come to realize that it's really just a way that they've turned this this period of history into a set of game mechanics is that the relationship between the vassal uh, and the liege is the most important thing. So it's one-on-one -on -one contact. Conclave made it really interesting with the dynamics of the council and such. But, uh, you know, in a, in a game like this, you kind of have to have borders, and it just because we're very used to thinking of things like, you know, nation-states, um, it's very easy to sort of think in terms that probably are a bit ac anachronistic, but I think the the fact that so much of this game rests on the individual, um, in one sense, I actually prefer it. I think it's actually better than most role-playing games that I play, because one thing that's great about this game is that uh, it's a lot like SCSF's original question, what do you want to accomplish this time? It's a big sandbox, but this game gives me enough things to want that, you know, I always wind up with these fun stories. So, you know, you know, I lost the magnum opus, it got burned and, and you know, um, then my character died and, you know, all my, all my family members had their, you know, their private parts chopped off. Um, you know, like nobody plans for that. I think most people would say that is not their idea of a good time in a game, but it's a heck of a story. And usually wants make for the most interesting stories. And that's why I think Crusader Kings 2 works so well for me. In some cases, I sometimes feel that RPGs put me on a little bit of a treadmill. And it's like, you're going to have fun no matter what. <laughs> um, and it's just sort of like, it's like, okay, well, you've sort of told me that I care about this, so I'm going to go on my way. Whereas Crusader Kings 2, you know, as far as a character is concerned, I'm just a bunch of stats and a few text windows that pop up. But I invest so much in myself. I just, I want these things. I want Istra. I want, uh, Car uh, sorry, Car Carnten. Um, you know, these are things that I'm really invested in getting. And so as a result, even if this isn't necessarily a game that you associate with, you know, the finest storytelling, uh, it's one that I find so compelling. Um, so it's... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Panda Player. Is anybody else having difficulty seeing the stream? 
and uh, it seems like your types of games are the ones that trick people into learning. <laughs> yep, that's usually the way it is, uh, Domi. I can actually, I'll tell us, uh, I need to get a little more gameplay under uh, under my belt, but um, I, I can tell a story about how I kind of turned, uh, how I, I have this particular bent uh, when it comes to the games that I play. Um, rabbit after rabbit was caught, killed, and brought to me by my new bird. I like this. So, slight boost to my diplomacy, but... Definitely not the, not the most sociable. <laughs> I am now known as the Just. You could do worse for titles. I am bringing Ar Ariagni uh, to the local monastery today. Uh, there she meets with many of my brothers and sisters doing penance to greet, uh, who greet her politely. As we leave the monastery, my, couriers, uh, my courtier says, go with God to all those she met today. Uh, I am very proud of her attitude to the, uh, to the ways of St. Benedict. She's an excellent student. Let's see what happens to her. She got something. Being such an industrious ru uh, ruler, you have not gone unnoticed by the population of Mantua. By paying the county elders a personal visit, they would surely be inspired, and the peasants would feel particularly appreciated. A small donation would go a long way, of course. So for 10 gold, I'll get some prestige. Uh, I will also get a bonus towards the local build time modifier. Now, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be building anything. Um, I will gain... But it's... Okay, so basically it's a month of... Well, slightly over a month of wealth that I'm generating. Uh, and I think the prosperity bonus is probably enough in the long run, so I can work with this. Okay. Um, sorry to hear about the troubles, guys. Let me just take a quick minute and see if I can find anything in my own window. My stats take a are... Uh, so I will say uh, seven seven twenty is not a uh, is not a problem because that is my uh, well okay it it's Twitch is not downgrading it to seven twenty because that's my default setting unfortunately and I'm a little disappointed at Twitch for this because one of the in fact the only reason why I became an affiliate was so that I could get transcodes it seems like there aren't transcoding options. Uh, so unfortunately, if you are, for whatever reason, your bandwidth is uh, less than the 3500 that I'm uploading at, uh, it may be that you have to, um, it may be that you have to watch the VOD, and I apologize for that. Um, if this becomes a regular thing from Twitch, I'm going to, I'll probably bump that, that setting down, but they really should not be withholding the transcodes at this point. Uh, the new bird is almost too perfect. I enjoy every hunt with her, and the cook has trouble finding new recipes for rabbit. I'm a falconer, or no more rabbit pie, please. No, 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 we'll definitely be a falconer. So that's going to be an additional one diplomacy, and anybody who is a falconer will, um, will do better. Thank you, Bite of Cat. I think it's probably going to be based on uh, it's probably going to be based on individual um, uh, based on on individual experience, individual connections. So sorry for those of you who aren't able to see it. Completely understand if you want to go off to another place that uh, might have a more consistent connection. I will do my best in the future to to try and make sure that the uploads are at more reasonable areas. Uh, I could hear someone sneaking around inside and believed it to be a burglar. When I went downstairs, I discovered Ariagne opening one of my letters. So, 
I'm gonna stop doing this because I feel really terrible every time I do that, especially when I'm drunk. So uh, in this case, I'm unfortunately... Uh, oh, actually, it's the, the child that loses it, so she could use some practice reading. I don't want this guy to be cruel. At the very least, I'll, I'll let him be uh, a happy Friar Tuck sort. Saxon Liberation Revolt. Where are you? All right. Apostate found. My court chaplain, uh, Altpert, bursts into your chambers, flanked by several warriors, dragging... Lorinek looping in with them in chains. My duke, there are many concerned peasants claiming that their children are plagued by nightmares of this man. He is obviously a warlock. What will be done with him? All right, so he's my spy master, which is rather undesirable. I think the first question is going to be, do I have a good replacement? Not really. So throw him in the dungeon, bring out the branding iron, let him go free, what harm could it do? <laughs> and I'll still have a negative opinion. Okay, well, you know what? There's no great solution to this that doesn't involve me losing something. We can burn him. We can throw him in the dungeon. We can brand him. We'll throw him in the dungeon. Let's see if we can maybe bring... Uh, Clearly bringing foreigners into the court is exactly the right way for me to, um... <laughs> oh, you know what? My options aren't really that much better, so we'll, we'll go for home... homegrown spy masters then. Now we could banish him. We get 13 gold for our trouble. And Alpert is now known as the Purifier. Obviously not all of you, uh, that doesn't apply to all of you, but I figure I might as well uh, say, type it in chat until things get uh, until things get a little more steady. So, I took a good look at myself and thought about my weaknesses and strengths. After many hours of soul searching, I realized I have nothing to be ashamed of and I become proud, or I have many strengths but more weaknesses, and I gain humble, which will give me piety. So this is a little tricky. I mean, this character isn't spectacularly young by the standards of the age. Um, we do have people who kind of live to be 50 or 60, but uh, it's not guaranteed, especially with my play style this time around. So the question is, I kind of feel like it's cool to get the monthly prestige and all, but, and I mean, proud does, I think, oh no, it's just, uh, just bonuses. I think in this case, I am going to go for humble. Uh, it's a little bit of a bigger gain on its own, so. <laughs> At age 71, my mother-in-law, Rosamund, not even going to try to pronounce it, died from a bad case of the flu. 
Okay, so if I were to declare war for... So de jure claim will cost me... Uh, that's quite a bit of money. So we can say Istra. I won't pay anything. For a carton. Okay. Well, I definitely have the strength for it. Um, we are betrothed, but I don't think that will I don't think that will hurt me yet. And as far as pacts, yeah. So I I'm not actually held. I'm not held to this. It is mighty tempting, because um, I think it's one that I can win pretty quickly. Let's go for it. Oh, actually, before I do that, assuming that I run into the problem where I can only get one. Yes, we'll take the coastal city first, and then we'll go a little bit closer. So the reasoning for that is I want the one with the higher amount of wealth. This would be for both, it looks like. We can go to the wharf. So yeah, this is the tricky part, is that there might be an argument for... for just taking everything. The net loss would be 150 prestige. Alternatively, I lose nothing. And I potentially lose one of the terror. You know, you never know what the future will bring. So we'll always have a claim on this. Let's go for Istra. And let's hopefully get the war done quick. And um, we'll uh, we'll see what fortune fortune brings. Whenever you play this game, you can't help but power game. You, even if you tell yourself you want to have a quaint little kingdom, you end up Emperor of Rome or something. Well, I mean, part of the it, part of that is just the way that the game sort of is set up and, and works. Um, I think a large part of that is just, you know, I always say it's hard to learn, easy to master. Um, once you have, once you have some of the basics down, it's not, like, it's not the worst game in the world. Like, this kind of makes it sound like it's a... Uh, like, this game is absolutely worth it if you've never played. Um, but it is also one of these games where once you sort of understand how things work, um, there aren't as many surprises. I do tend to find when I play Crusader Kings 2 that I I definitely have this experience of, uh, of sort of feeling like I can't be... I can't be beaten. Um at a certain point. Um, now that doesn't mean that you don't have setbacks, uh, and that's what makes the game so interesting, and I will definitely say that by and large, let's just reorganize, Oop, let's rank up, um, I think by and large like there's more, um, I might smash into these guys, yeah, let's uh, Let's get a battlefield win first, and then we'll start sieging it down. Honored Oblatus Adamero, I hereby grant you permission to advance to the next rank within the Benedictine Order. And I think it's just because the focus, like, so, um, especially before they introduced things like the Shattered Retreat, this game was, uh, or, like, uh, Crusader, or, sorry, Europa Universalis IV was definitely a little bit more of a military game. And again, this is sort of a reflection in terms of the priority. Ooh, that was quick. Uh, King Artavatus of Croatia was captured in battle and is now my prisoner. Right, well. Duke Adamero the Just has usurped the title the Country of Istra from Duke Reodold the Whisperer. Frulian Croatian de jure war over Istra has ended. Duke Adamero of Fruli won. So we won because we, uh, 
we beat the, uh, we captured the king, just like chess. Oh, let me just take a quick second here. Um, but yeah, so SCSF, I mean, what SCF, SCF, SF is describing is once you get, so the thing that's great about this game is that learning it is a ton of fun. So like your first, you know, tens of hours, first 10 hours or so of learning how, how the game works is just going to be fun because you get to learn stuff. And then uh, after that, you're going to start thinking, okay, maybe I don't want to just be an Irish count or something like that. Maybe I want to like get into the thick of it. Maybe I want to try and be a Duke in France, or maybe I want to try some kind of a, a tribal, uh, you know, a tribal nation or something like that, um, or ruler rather. Uh, and of course, you you follow your interests. This is always the case in these kinds of games. But. Um, there is a certain point that once you sort of understand how the basics sort of work, you have a general plan in place. Now, again, jumping into a particular character and deciding to play, uh, make certain decisions that are consistent with the sort of person you want to play is sort of re rewarding on its own. Um, I'm definitely not going to be able to declare war again. Not until 10 years from now. Um, but with that in mind, it sometimes has a little bit of a cost, which is that if... Now, this is largely a personal opinion, and this is not something that I think is a slight against Crusader Kings 2, because, again, it's it's always fun to just sit down and say, wouldn't it be awesome if you'd had, like, everything I love about all games? But it's sort of like if you were to take all of the food that you like and put it into a blender. Like, you probably wouldn't want to drink that. Um, so in the case of Crusader Kings 2... I think there's a little bit more nuance in terms of the diplomacy and the interactions with individuals. Like marriage is just, you could really write a small manual on how marriage works and how you can use it towards your advantages. Um, and that's the really rewarding part. But of course the cost is, is that you know what all of the stats are and you know what they do. And if you want, you can sort of play Dr. Strangelove and make your, you know, your superior race. Um, in the game, and uh, there's really nothing to stop you. Like, it's it's a big spreadsheet, and if you know how to manipulate the spreadsheet well, then you're gonna wind up with a, you know, the, basically the, you can't play a mayor, but like, the, the closest thing up from mayor, who all of a sudden is the, the emperor of the ruler, or is that the ruler of the world, emperor of the world. Uh, let me just um, catch up. Ba, 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 ba. Pandy said they were leaving. Yeah, I think it was just because of the the transcodes issue. I noticed that the the numbers have been dropping. Let me just take a quick second here. I know the gameplay winds up on hold whenever I test this stuff, but I do want to get a quick idea in terms of what we're looking at as far as quality options. Shame on you, Twitch. Shame on you. Well, you know what? We'll enjoy we'll enjoy the experience that we have. Uh, numbers are are only one small small part of it um so no it's if it's locked at 720 that's because that's the rate that i upload at um which admittedly is not great but it's what we've got um oh yeah there's a lot of people playing crusader kings 2 anyway so that's probably going to be something that uh that's probably going to be something that um, that Twitch is taking into account anyway. Uh, I tried to watch the stream at the highest definition available. It was 720p. And you clicked on the stream, totally froze, so you thought the same thing was happening to you. And you love playing the kinds of rulers that basically invade an area and settle there, starting as a Viking or a nomad and making a kingdom in the Middle East or Africa. I haven't actually played uh, a, a nomad yet. I think that's one that I should maybe try next. Um... Anyways, uh, God's blessing upon thee, uh, Camissus at Amero. You've impressed us with your noble rule and adherence to the rule of St. Benedict as a reward for your recent achievement, uh, uh, sorry, advancement to the rank of uh, Camissus. I have sent you one of St. Benedict's finger bones. Protect this holy relic with your life. You honor me. That's two finger bones we got. So it's very likely that I'm going to have to give up some of these titles after um, uh, after this character dies because they've got a particularly high stewardship. 
Uh, and so, and again, there's a couple of reasons for this. One is because I'm Benedictine. Uh, one of these is because I'm Midas touched. And the other reason is I'm just. And I don't believe it tells me, oh yeah, it says right here. So basically I am getting three additional um, sort of units for my demen. So if you think about it, that's going to mean that I'm really only going to have six uh, for a standard uh, for a standard ruler. Now, of course, I can slightly tilt this towards my favor um, by uh, by working a little bit more in terms of, uh, of raising some children that are uh, are more inclined towards stewardship. But of course, that just means that there may be some other things that I wind up giving up instead. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, the best way to describe playing a nomad is a snowball. You start off pretty weak, but once you get rolling, there's basic, basically nothing stopping you from taking whatever you want. And that's actually, um, that's kind of how I wound up playing just about everything, uh, if I'm completely honest. Um, I normally, like uh, for a while, I really liked playing in England, the smallest count, uh, count that I could find in England. Um, and, you know, inevitably I'd wind up with something resembling the, the British Empire, so... And that's lovely to hear that you're feeling better, uh, Domi. I'm glad that Captain Shield was polite enough to ask you uh, when I failed to do so. So, um, Young Walder, uh, sorry, Waldera has finished her education in the ways of war. It is evident that she excelled in her studies. Now, of course, one of the drawbacks here is that I may, because of this betrothal, I may wind up with a, uh, a non-aggression pact. So. We'll send the marriage offer. We'll see whether or not that uh, that seals the deal. It, I don't think it did, but we will find out. To the wit, Adamero, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your suggestion that Waldera, sorry, Wal, Walderada and King <laughs> Kim get married. My former ward has finished her education. In our final discussions, we talked about the rule of St. Benedict and trying to improve oneself in the eyes of God. We've tried to encourage her to do this for herself, and she attempted to take my advice. I wonder if she made any progress. I will ask her how it is going. So here's a question for you, Domi. Um, if slash when you were to ever try this game, uh, and I should mention, once upon a time, um, Paradox actually made this game available for free, so I don't know if they'll ever do that again in the future, but this game does uh, does show up in things like Humble Bundles and whatnot every once in a while. Um, but if you were to play this game, what is the first, what is the one one country or one type of ruler you would be most interested to play in the Middle Ages? Uh, Alright. Uh... Well, Dorada came and told me all about how she strived to follow the rule of St. Benedict and become a better woman. She talks vigorously of all her prayers and the time spent doing penance and, uh, sorry, in her strive to become closer to God. She seems to have had great success. So she became honest, which will be a penalty to her intrigue. Bonus to diplomacy. Unfortunately, she is a little dull, so I knew she could do it. Gained 10 piety and she's honest. You know, the funny thing is, too, when I started playing this, I did not, I, I was very fascinated by Charlemagne. I was, I, I, I've always found him a very compelling figure, you know, so, so original on my part, I know. Um, so there was that uh, sort of bonus. But I didn't really know that much about the Middle Ages. And um, again, one of the things that I like about it, so if you play certain... Um, certain characters. Let's maybe go to France. Um, it's probably a bit much to hope that there's still a Carling. Oh, yep, there's the Carlings. Alright, so Carl. So in this game you can actually... Wait! It's the wrong Carl. Uh, 
this is the right Garl. So you can click on it. Now, you guys can't see it here, um, but you can do... This King Carl of France is the man known as Charlemagne, or Charles the Great. And if you click on it, it gives you a Wikipedia link. So if for the characters who are um, sort of historical characters that you... They're, they're well known enough that you can find them in Wikipedia, the game actually does provide you a link. Now, I am playing Adamero the Just of Fruli, which is a totally invented character. And I'm pretty sure nowhere in the Adamini family tree is anybody ever going to show up in Wikipedia. Because this is just such a minor, uh, you know, minor... Lombard um, nobility, but uh, you know, much like anything, you can you can go as deep down the rabbit hole as you would like, and um, sometimes you just run into something that interests you. So, for instance, there was that uh, that character that wanted to kill me. I did not realize that there was a uh, Karite heresy uh, in Judaism. Um, so you can always find these little these little things that. Uh, that intrigue you. Steward Markward has some interesting ideas on how to improve the economy. So it will cost me 13.7 gold, um, but it will gain an ec uh, economic spread rate as well as prosperity. And I usually always adopt these because it pays off in the long run. Um, is there an option to be a revolutionary and make a coup? Oh yeah, I mean, that's how I became a duke. Um, I threw off the, the shackles of the, uh, the unjust rule of, of my lord and uh, instilled myself as the duke or it was a duchess to be perfectly uh to be perfectly honest um and of course if you're thinking of sort of world spanning revolution maybe you would want to play um the vikings which is available in the old gods dlc uh count shield i feel kind of ended how i ended the psychology <laughs> um Oh, let me bring back my dashboard. But yeah, again, this is one of the important things. Oh, my steward has been hard at work in Verona, increasing the infrastructure and motivating the local people to work even harder. Always good news. Okay, so we're slowly closing in on our goal to repay the money lenders. As you'll notice, we're now up to uh, nine rather than seven a month. Part of that is the acquisition of Istra. Now, again, in a perfect world, I would do things like build castle towns and whatnot. It looks like I'm actually pretty well set up as far as most of these, uh, as far as most of these, um, Actually, also on the note of independence, uh, there are factions. So um, somebody wants increased council power in my uh, in my my duchy, and inside of Lombardy, there is one group that wants independence and one group that wants uh, increased council power. So um, there's needless to say, lots of things to do. We're not taking advantage of a lot of them right now. Istra was sort of a, an easy was an easy grab, so I went for it. Um, but in this particular case here, uh, my main goal is to get enough money to repay the debt that I've incurred, and then we'll start rebuilding our coffers in order to, uh, there we go, we'll repay that now. Um, we're basically going to refill the coffers so that I can start upgrading my holdings again. So first priority will be any uh, sort of wealth generating, uh, any wealth generating uh, properties that I have. So, for instance, castle uh, castle walls would be particularly good. Although, I don't own this anymore. Ah, I own the Barony of Esti. In Padua. I might want to give that to an heir. I won't give it away right away, but that's a really good target for giving something away... So, for instance, if this character were to die and I were to wind up with, uh, let's say... Uh, oh, you know what? I don't have any plots underway right now. We should think about that a little bit. Uh, so, for instance, uh, let's say that I this character died suddenly and I was down to only able... Uh, on, I was only able to have a size 6 demen. One of the things that I might consider doing 
would be to take Padua and to give away uh, the Barony of Esti. Now, I would want to give that to a family member if I could, because obviously family members will generally think higher of me, and the whole point of this game is to sort of advance your bloodline as, as far as you can. Um, but in this particular case, this is just an example of me giving up sort of a single holding in favor of most likely uh, Carton, which will give me... I, I will get territory of my own here, um, but it will also give me the advantage of uh, taking the uh, sort of the income from the city and the bishopric in the, in the area as well. Yeah, I, I, and I'm not 100% sure on those kinds of details myself, uh, Domi. I mean, one really important thing, too, is uh, it's a little difficult to consider on a relative basis as well, because obviously if you have a life expectancy which is much lower than what, uh, what we experience here, and obviously I'm not talking in terms of an average because infant mortality is enormous, um, but uh, if you just consider sort of what sort of the upper bound of your uh, your lifespan would be like you know having if you if midlife is 20 <laughs> um, that's uh, that's just a very different way of looking at how uh, how the world works and of course another probably more relevant consideration in this case is trying to build these uh, these relationships which are largely political arrangements um, C.S. Lewis is best known for, uh, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia, um, and if you at least grew up in a, you know, a, a sort of a Protestant Christian uh, household, if not a, um, uh, you know, or, you know, at least have been exposed to that, uh, you might be familiar with some of his theological uh, writings, or, you know, there was also some uh, more Christian-oriented fiction thing like the Screwtape Letters and such. But some of his academic work um, was, I think it's called The Invention of Love or something like that. And it's essentially this sort of, almost this chronicle of the concept of love out of the Middle Ages into its more modern conception. I don't necessarily think it's like something that you should like drop and read unless you're particularly interest in the, interested in that topic. And I read it like years ago, so I don't remember it that well. Um, but there is scholarship on that that issue, and it's a really complicated and potentially very interesting topic if it's the sort of thing that you're uh, that you're interested in. Uh, to the thrifty Duke Adamero, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. Please support me by voting with me in the council. If you agree to do this for me, I will henceforth owe you a favor. Now, in this particular case, as a 23-year-old, reasonably strong, uh, save for the depression and the stress and the hunchback. Okay, <laughs> moderately strong. Um, King of Lombardy. He is in an alliance with the uh, the King of East Francia, which obviously doesn't mean quite as much as it would in uh, in ye old days. But in this case, I will accept. Uh, this probably won't go well for me because I am a subject of him and I want more power. Uh, and kings tend to take away power rather than give it out. But um, I think it'll be something that helps me in the long run. It's possible. I'll see. Um, I'll obviously. I'll let the game keep uh, running. I'll, I'll go on slow, but let me see if I can find uh, the C.S. Lewis book. The Allegory of Love. Uh, the Lords of Lombardy have approved the institution of the Ruler Title Revocation Sovereignty Law. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have been so... Uh, maybe I shouldn't have been so quick to 
Well, it'll help me when I become king. Duke Edomero has voted for ruler title revocation sovereignty due to returning a favor to King, uh, king Lando. All right. Uh, Wikipedia entry for this is The Allegory of Love, The Allegory of Love, A Study in Medieval Tradition, uh, 1936 by C.S. Lewis, is an exploration of the allegorical treatment of love in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, which was released on May 21st, 1936. In the first chapter, Lewis traces the development of the idea of courtly love from the provincial troubadours to the full development in the works of Chrétien de Troyes. It is here that he sets forth a famous characterization of the peculiar form in which courtly love first took, the four marks of humility, courtesy, adultery, and the religion of love. The last two of which marks have, in particular, uh, sorry, the last two of which, two, last two of which marks have, uh, I don't, can't quite parse this sentence correctly, uh, in particular have been the subject of a good deal of controversy among later scholars. In the second chapter, Lewis discusses the medieval evolution of the allegorical tradition in such writers as Bernard uh, Silvestris and Alain, Alain de Lille. The remaining chapters drawing on the points made in the first two examine the use of allegory in the depiction of love in a selection of poetic works, beginning with Romain de la Rose. Uh, the focus, however, is on English works, the poems of Chaucer, Gowers, Confessio Amantis, and Usk's Testament of Love, the works of Chaucer's uh, Epigenes? I'm sorry, I'm really bad at this. And Spencer's a Fairy Queen. Uh, the book is ornamented with quotations from poems in many languages, including classical and medieval Latin, Middle English, and Old French. The piquant English translations of many of these are Lewis's own work. So again, it's not exactly the sort of thing you'll take with you on the beach, but if you are interested in, uh, you know, I, th I won't even necessarily say it's the best book on the subject, but you know, if you like figures like Eleanor of Aquitaine and, and some of these concepts. Uh, it is an example. I, I think one of the things that makes stuff like this so interesting, even if you're not somebody who's a huge fan of, of Lewis himself, is that, you know, Lewis was a member of the Inklings, along with J.R.R. Tolkien, and he was somebody who wrote fiction, and wrote fiction which has been very effective at communicating with its audience. Uh, and so to have somebody who works in that you know it, it'd almost be like finding out that jk rowling sort of had this oxford um education in classics or in medieval literature and took the opportunity to give sort of a more scholarly uh look at some of the things that caught her interest at least from an academic point of view um and clearly as somebody who's written harry potter which is a very popular and it's a, a you know, it's it's a book that's resonated with a lot of people. I just think there's something very interesting in writers who have created successful fiction doing an analysis of what's come before. Um, so again, it's it's a, a very much a your mileage may vary sort of thing. Obviously, I do not know this work well enough to give it a, a full-throated recommendation. Um, but I also sort of think that if you are motivated enough to take up a work like that, then chances are it will be something that you find very rewarding. And maybe you can share some of the, uh, the insights that you get from that with the rest of us who didn't pick up the book. Uh, Donatus Popo has contacted me, asking if I have any interest in learning more about roses. Apparently, his latest achievement involves a dark red variant mixed with a particular type of yellow wild rose. All right. Well, uh, fascinating. I shall visit the mon uh, monastery where this feat has been accomplished. Uh, oh, I simply must have some, or this seems like a waste of my time. No, let's let's learn more about roses. It's relevant to your area of study, though. Uh, not sure you'll ever use it, but it's really interesting indeed. Domi, I've never asked you your field of study. What do you study, if you don't mind sharing? All right, let's bump this up again. God's blessing upon thee, Commissus Adamero. It has been brought to our attention that you are perhaps not spending the appropriate effort on matters of theology. We would like to encourage you to set aside your worldly worries uh, and focus on matters of a more divine nature. So we will pick the theology focus. Um, so this is a tricky question. Um, I don't really want to switch from my family focus until, well, this is a tough call, right? I don't really need the health at the moment. Um, I have a backup son if it comes down to it, so I don't need to worry so much about um, 
making babies with the wife, although it would be nice to have a few more uh, kids. So the fertility bonus is nice. Um, I also don't remember what age. Um, they stopped giving birth. Um, yeah, it's a tricky, it's a tricky call. Um, whether or not I give up the family focus now or a little bit later. Let's accept it and we'll decide, uh, we'll decide a bit later. In the meantime, we're doing fairly well on the military front. Uh, about 500 more, uh, actually not even, it's more like 400. Um, and we'll be back at full capacity. Of course, we have got... Uh, we either need to get rid of this ruler uh, or we need to wait uh, for basically another nine years before we're going to be able to take him on. He's 19, so it's not likely that he's going to be uh, off the throne anytime. You implied you're an academic. Uh, you're not. You just meant relevant to what you're studying at the university. No, no, no. That's exactly what I mean. If you're... I mean... You don't have to, you know, I, I, I do not need to see Domi PhD uh, for you to, to have interest, you know, scholarly interests. Um, you know, I'm certainly not a professor, but I, I read lots of stuff that interests me. No, 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 not, please don't apologize, Domi. Uh, I, am, I am interested in what you are studying at university, if you would be willing to, um, if you would be willing to, to share. Escorted through the gardens of the monastery, I immediately spot the work of Brother Popo. The roses are a delicate mixture of red and yellow, a hue of sunset at the center. They're beautiful, my escort, uh, my escort nods, offering me a small spade. They're a little cramped over here, though. Would you mind helping me out? So I can say, oh, I think I can do that. Uh, oh, I can do that, I think. So 60% chance that I gain green fingers, 40% chance that I gain dirty hands. Um, oh, my. Uh, and I can say, thank you, but no thanks. These are marvelous, though. You know what? Let's let's risk it. Um, there is uh, there is of course the drawback that I totally blow it and my uh, my learning goes down. But let's uh, let's do our best, especially because the benefit is longer than the cost. Dirty hands. <laughs> So I guess I just have a quick text message to deal. <laughs> Character has tried their hands at gardening, but all they got was dirty. All right. Oh, you know what? I've been completely ignoring the education fo focus. So um, this is somebody who is going to potentially marry into... Um, potentially may, may be um, the queen, eventually. Uh, let's keep her a uh, diplomat. And this is the future version of me. Uh, so we will teach him... You know, it is a little tempting to try and go for some of the more scholarly. I'm going to take a shot at Heritage, especially because Jordan Hopeck. Thank you very much for the follow. I really appreciate that. Especially because it seems like we've been having some video problems. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Uh, we'll be focusing on uh, staying as Lombard, which is good. Catholic faith, which is good, uh, and hopefully will bolster a little bit of the learning. This will be a, a good experiment. My steward, Marquardt, has been increasing hard at work in Verona, increasing the infrastructure and motivating the local people to work even harder. Good news. Now, maybe I should start building some hospitals before I start trying to upgrade um, some of the income-producing 
territory. So I'm pleased to hear that after a period of peace and shrewd management, the con count, sorry, the county of Istra is doing very well. People are happy, and the tax collectors are reporting record intakes. Good news there. So 48 versus the 44.5. Looks like things are not going well for Croatia. They are currently at war with a rebel. Yeah, it looks like somebody wanted to take a title from another one. All right, uh, she's finished her education in diplomacy. It is evident that she has excelled in her studies. She is a charismatic ne uh, negotiator, so minus to Marshall, not that she'll be leading any armies. Bonus to intrigue, learning, uh, huge bonus to diplomacy and fertility. This pleases me. And this is... Ooh, maybe I don't want... We're gonna wait to see how this revolt goes. <laughs> My former ward has finished her education. In our final discussions, we talked about following the rule of St. Benedict and trying to improve oneself in the eyes of God. I've tried to encourage her to do this for herself, and she has attempted to take my advice. I wonder if she's made any progress. Uh, she came and told me all about how she strived to follow the rule of St. Benedict and become a better woman. She talks vigorously of all her prayers and the time spent doing penance and her strive to become closer to God. She has had great success. So on that note, let's break the betrothal. Well, okay, is he winning? So I would have thought that this is, yeah, this is a huge fight going on in, in Byzantium right now. Not that I'd be able to do anything about it, but. Well, you know what? We'll send you off. We'll see what happens. You wrote a message longer than your life expectancy, and you saw that you were disconnected from chat. <laughs> You're back to retype it. So sorry, uh, Domi. Sure, we'll accept. I just hope she doesn't wind up blind. Oh, this is really interesting. So if this king gets bumped off, this winds up back in Lombardy. Um, that's actually very helpful. Well, potentially very helpful. It depends on what my, what I think my prospects are as far as uh, advancing. You owe me a favor. Uh, okay, let's teach you something. So I can make him intrigue, stewardship, learning. We'll go for stewardship just because he's already got a bonus towards it. Uh, intrigue may need a, may need a bit of work, but we'll do what we can. The trade route from Istra is in dire need of a new ship and equipment to continue bringing goods to our realm. Well, I don't really want to spend this money, but I'm going to. Um, there may potentially be some very severe consequences for being this far in debt, uh, but we will be out of it in less than a year. <laughs> Who doesn't want a possessed bishop? Uh, let's put you... Ideally, I have somebody competent, but he likes me too much, so... Oh, I've already put him in... Uh, in place though, so let's go for number two.
All right, let's think uh, what else what else can we do? So I'm currently not trying to murder anyone uh, and I'm not trying to why is she a threat? I guess it's because of the faction. So it says she's a threat, but she's not really. So let's see if there's any other interesting things that I can do. Here's something I can try. So I can't revoke it on its own, but I can probably plot. Plot to revoke. Um, but I have a truce, so I can't do that. Okay, um, let's think then. I can try and murder my way to a new position, but I don't see a lot of reason to do that. Um, my liege is pretty strong right now, so I don't want to try any funny business. Um, I mean, in theory, I could probably get like a faction together to try and take the uh, try and take the title, but that's um, that's a little much. So maybe, frankly, because this guy is trying to kill me, let's um, let's try uh, and turn the tables, and we'll speed things up a little bit. So. Looks like she's not destined to become a diplomat. Let's make her a spy then. Uh, she focuses her studies on the way of intrigue and acting in the shadows. Playful and fussy children will do better with this education. Rowdy and affectionate children will be hampered. So don't expect great things, but you never know. Let's see if Twitch has improved as far as the quality. Okay, something about raiders. They've come to loot Treviso. Well, that will not do. So I'm going to hit control to keep these guys from uh, from clobbering my my real army. It's going to take me a little bit to assemble the proper forces. What we're going to do immediately after I combine these, we're going to make sure that uh, the two... Basically, I want these two armies to combine at just the right moment. And then we'll raise the forces in Treviso to uh, to make sure they don't make away with too much booty. And I see your message there, Domi. Let me just take a quick second and get this sorted out. And I did want to take a minute and just see how the how the stream was going. So I could try resetting the stream to get the trans codes. I have a feeling it won't be coming up. Unless I, uh, unless I do a reset. I've had this happen once before, but that's a bit of a shame just because I do sort of... I, I only ever upgraded the quality of the broadcast uh, in order for people to be able to take advantage of the transcodes. Um, but that's fine, because we're here to enjoy Crusader Kings too. Um, I know there's a few other people broadcasting it tonight, so I don't have to worry too much about uh, meeting any kind of... Um, follower numbers or something like that. So Reg, uh, Domi says, uh, so you're saying psychology is a very heterogeneous field. The classes that usually get you out of your seat were the ones related to neurolinguistics and evolutionary psychology. Also, anything related to power dynamics. Not sure what the correct term for it is. You've been pretty underwhelmed about the university, unfortunately. Uh, you've been... Uh, but some weeks ago, you had to read a very famous article on uh, hypotheses of evolutionary origins of the patriarchy. And he was like, that's really cool, uh, Domi. I'll admit, I've sometimes been a little skeptical of, um, so I think the one ten tendency that I haven't in liked as much in um, evolutionary psychology is sort of, it's. I sometimes get the impression for some of these papers that it's a bit like, uh, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, but on the other hand, I do think it actually has a certain degree of explanatory power, which is very interesting. Uh, you know what? I probably didn't need to raise these guys, so we'll just, uh, we'll just drop these forces. Again, the whole purpose of this is to stop the, uh, to stop the raiders from being able to get what they, 
uh, to get what they want. Um, but more importantly, too, I know some of the most rewarding, um, some of the most rewarding sort of developments in, uh, in economics have actually been in the field of, um, have been in the field of kind of behavioral economics, which is this nice blending of, uh, of psychology and economics and, and Nobel Prize winners like uh, Robert Schiller and um, Richard Thaler are, uh, we actually saw Thaler in, um, uh, what was the movie, The Big Short. Uh, and it does, I mean, especially because a lot of economics deals with preferences. Um, sometimes there is a little bit more power than just sort of saying, you know, preferences are what they are and people will behave this certain way. And instead, getting a little bit more focused on what what's actually going on uh, can lead to some more sort of rewarding uh, conclusions. And as a result, um, it's a field that I don't know that much about, but it's one that I, I sort of, I can definitely see the interest in. Um, and I think you're exactly right, which is like, I don't like, okay, that's not entirely true. I am very easy to please in economics, but there are definitely some fields that I like more than others. And I know I definitely feel the passion that I do for certain subjects like political economy, um, international trade to a certain extent too, although I'm not as well versed in it. Um, and the nice thing is, is that you don't need to love every topic uh, to be able to, to have a very rewarding study. You just need to make sure that you understand enough of the fundamentals to be able to contribute to your main focus. So, uh, and that's really a throat clearing for me, Domi. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear though that um, you know, despite the the troubles of your studies, that there were some things that you were able to hang on to to keep your interest. And the eyes of sin, I'm sorry I did not acknowledge you immediately. I'm very happy to see you. I was a little worried that I, um, you know, think things ended on an amb ambiguous note in terms of how you were feeling. So I'm pleased you are around. I'm pleased you are well. I'm hoping you're having a better day than, than some of the stuff that happened in uh, Elegy's chat. For those of you who don't know, by the way, the eyes of sin, uh, I always like to shout her out as a broadcaster, but The Eyes of Sin does a wonderful job of uh, moderating for people. Uh, none, uh, no less than uh, Elegy, of, formerly Elegy of Games, now currently just Elegy. And he's somebody who does a lot of the, uh, the what's the best way to put it? Um, the Twitch Prime, you know how like you get certain games with Twitch Prime? He's someone who sort of does that sort of promotion for um, for Twitch Prime. It's actually something I would rather enjoy doing. Obviously, it would be a little bit different from the way that I do Crusader Kings 2 or um, Cult of Simulator. I'd be a little bit more focused on pushing the game forward. But uh, but I, you know, she does a really great job with a sometimes very unruly chat, and particularly unruly when I'm there because I definitely like being a bit of a <laughs> I definitely like being a bit of a pain. But, um, but yeah, uh, in addition to her talents as a broadcaster, The Eyes of Sin is somebody who does a lot of work as a, as a moderator as well, and so I recognize her. Welcome back, Captain Shield. Let me just take a quick second to catch up uh, with... You know, actually, Domi, um, so if you are interested in behavioral uh, economics, there's two people I can recommend. Um, the, there's sort of the, uh, the great duo uh, would be Danny Kahneman and Amos Tversky. Kahneman actually studied at uh, the school I went to, UBC, when he was making his contributions. Uh, and his big sort of famous book right now is Thinking Fast and Slow, which I have a copy of, but I regret to inform you I have not read yet. I'm very interested in it, though. Um, Robert Schiller has got, uh, if you do the Open Yale courses, now he talks about financial markets. He doesn't talk as much about behavioral economics on that one, but he, I find him a very compelling uh, speaker. So you you may find it, if you are interested in financial markets, he'd be good at that. Richard Thaler is actually reasonably well known for having a, a popular class, one that's very relevant to sort of students and contemporary issues, but I don't know if he has any lectures online. Um, but I think even starting with thinking, thinking Fast and Slow, if you've not read that one, I have not, I've only ever heard good things from people about it. Uh, and so that might be something that can push you, uh, push you to your, uh, your interests. 
and uh, Johnny says, I like to comment on topics you know nothing about. But Johnny, you are a bundle of surprises. So are there any topics that you don't know about? Could you please tell us, comment as to what, uh, what topics you don't know about? Um, Johnny is my favorite caster on Twitch. So after I get a little bit more gameplay underneath, I'll talk to you a little bit about him, but let me just catch up with what's in chat. Uh, you've heard it in class about aversion to inequality. Uh, you believe most economical theories make it uh, make absolutely no sense for people to be upset on gaining more than someone else uh, for doing the same task, but it happens. Yeah, well, one of the things too, I, I know there's the perception of economics in terms of being that uh, everybody's selfish and everybody wants to sort of maximize their own individual wealth. Um, that is a set of assumptions you can put into a model, um, but Utility maximizing agents does not necessarily mean that they're these psychotic, you know, just pleasure machines that will take everything that they can possibly get. Um, my preference, in fact, I know for a fact that my preferences are that people be treated fairly, that people be treated well. Um, and whether you think of this Rawlsian sort of veil of ignorance, under which everybody sort of, you know, you have to pick the rules before you know what you're going to be born as, or whether you just dislike the inconvenience of seeing homeless people asking you for money. There's lots of different ways that you can motivate that. But somebody's individual preferences can also be that there be a certain amount of equality or inequality in the world. There's nothing saying that everybody needs to be completely selfish and indifferent to the suffering of others, because I don't think anybody actually believes that. Um, now, whether or not that's relevant to the model is another question, but that kind of depends what the model is. So. Uh, what else did we have? Sin is done making pizza. Um, you may have said something silly about me, as, but oh well. I don't think you said anything silly. Uh, free games with Prime. Ba -ba. What else do we have here? Johnny Big Times, relax after work. What did you make at work today, Johnny? Um, hey, Nakina. For, thank you. <laughs> Fourth of their name. Welcome. And... Yes, okay, I'm done done chatting about Econ for a little while. Uh, young Gunold is full of energy and willing to get uh, and a will to get things done. Uh, he should use that power for good and he'll become just as well, or life will reward him. He tr loses the trait conscientious and gains the trait diligent. Nope, we'll make him just. Swedish meat oh, Swedish meatballs are great. And Paradox is a Swedish company, so it is especially appropriate. Uh, and I will do my best not to do a Swedish chef voice, but no promises. Um, by the way, um, a little, oh no, I went on too many tangents. While we're waiting for a little more action to happen inside of the game, let me take a minute here and talk about the wonderful Johnny Big Time. Uh, Johnny, I am so happy about this. Um, for those of you who follow the channel for a while, you know that I did that blog on Battlefield 5, well, specifically on EA, but I brought up Battlefield 5. Uh, and it annoyed a lot of people, and that is exactly the way I wanted it to be. <laughs> um, because I think those people deserve to be annoyed. Um, but obviously, I wasn't necessarily banking, but I would not quite have... My acute deficit has allowed a smuggler's ring to appear. That's what I was dreading. Um, fortunately, we'll have a hospital, um, but the smuggler's ring is going to... Uh, well, they're going to extort the builders, it's going to boost the costs of things, and it will make, uh, it'll make disease rampant. There used to be penalties in terms of, um, in terms of income, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Uh, unfortunately, well, no epidemics running around, so. Anyways, um, so Battlefield 5. Um, Johnny was very excited for Call of Duty 4, and he actually, he made the game look Black Ops 4, uh, made the game look very exciting, um, and was a little unenthusiastic about Battlefield 5. And I had an inclination that it would be fun to play, but I know that there was not a lot of enthusiasm about the game going in. Now, I personally have really enjoyed Battlefield 5, but what has been a particular delight is watching Johnny's stream and watching how much he has been enjoying it. And then on top of that, he has been playing The Witcher recently. Uh, Johnny has got this, we've got the Lombard, Lombard War on... Ah, he's trying to regain this territory. Godspeed, sir. I am not helping you. I don't have the money. Um...
I didn't know I had a choice. Anyways, um, Johnny's been, uh, has got a particular talent. So first of all, he's just a born entertainer. I know I always keep saying this. I know I always keep, uh, you know, I keep repeating, but it's true. Like he just, you know, he's got something that really makes him just a true joy to watch every single time. Um, but he also does these really great franchise playthroughs, and I know, obviously, I'm sort of struggling to keep the, the Elder Scrolls entertaining. I am enjoying doing it, but I should let you know that on YouTube, the, um, the viewer numbers are pretty clear. Like, the numbers go down over time. I think the novelty is worn off, and I think it's a very niche thing. Um, which is one of the reasons why I was a little uncertain about doing Surviving Mars, but I actually really enjoy Surviving Mars, and I would like to show it to you more. Um, so with that in mind, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking another shot at it. But uh, one of the things I really could stand to do, and I think if you guys enjoy that sort of stuff that I do, uh, you should definitely check out Johnny Big Time, because he does an absolutely incredible job of these... Um, these uh, um, sort of franchise playthroughs and it's a really unique experience to sort of watch him go through them with a, f a fresh set of eyes and see whether or not the hype lives up um, because Johnny I think the other thing that's great too is Johnny gives this very unvarnished opinion about the games that he plays and uh, he does a great job of uh, he does a great job of like he's respectful about the games but he definitely does not uh, he definitely does not mince words when he thinks something is not uh, not good. So I definitely encourage you guys to check him out. And I cannot believe this trade route from Verona is in dire need of a new ship and equipment to be able to continue bringing goods into our realm. I bring in another debt of 200 gold. So uh, anyways, two wonderful streamers. Eyes of Sin does not broadcast as often as I would like, um, but it's definitely somebody you should check out. And then on top of that, we've got Johnny Big Time, who is a much more regular streamer. And whether you watch Battlefield Five, The Witcher, or any of the other fun little indie games that he discovers, uh, somebody who is well worth your attention. And hopefully, maybe one day, we'll be able to do some Stellaris in the future. Uh, moving along, Eyes of Swin says, I was worried about mentioning the Swedish chef to some Swedish friends of mine, as you didn't want to perpetuate the stereotype. But all of your Swedish friends apparently are severely amused and endeared by the Swedish chef. I mean, it's like me, you know, whenever people are talking about the, you know, Oh, hey, you're Canadian, eh? Yeah, you like that poutine, eh? I'm like, yes, I am a Canadian and I love poutine. And, I mean, people point out things like the way that I say against, um you know or or zed for that matter like there are definitely things that people pick up on as far as being canadianisms but you know i don't think they're bad um and i figure i don't know if anybody's ever really called me overly polite but i figure there are worse things in the world that someone can call you right so um oh you know what i think it's time that i uh i embrace theology so let me just double check because I can't change this again. Um, where they go, there is time in all our lives where these matters become even more crucial. It is time for you to focus on theology. Okay. Uh, Dyer of Dyer's host has forced my half-sister uh, to become his concubine. Well, I mean, she's only a half-sister, right? So... Oh, and I get my health. Cool. Uh, we're happy to hear that you've devoted your time to matters of theology. May the coming years of devoted study bless you with new insights. And we gain 100 devotion for our trouble. You wouldn't have found your channel without it? That's right, Captain Shield. I forgot that you came through that. So, All right. Uh, again, we're basically looking at another year of, uh, of debts. This, unfortunately, is probably going to mean more smugglers' rings and whatnot are going to appear up. So... What's my opinion on South Park Canadians, though? I mean, I have kind of complicated views on South Park in general, because I think in some senses it's hard not to say that it's... Uh, it's hard to say that it isn't good satire, but I also think they're... Like... I don't know, there's, there's sort of this tendency... I kind of feel like there's a whole generation of people who watch South Park who suddenly think that this really almost regressive and very repellent behavior is somehow edgy or free-thinking. Um, 
And I don't think South Park is necessarily responsible for, like, the way people think. On the other hand, like, like there's a really good example of um, the Stick of Truth. I have it, and I've actually be kind of interested in playing it. And normally, I, when I play something for the first time, I play it on stream. But I also have a couple of friends who've actually said that they're actually quite uncomfortable when people play um, that game on Twitch. Uh, and I don't know, like it's I don't like being like I'm, you know, in personal conversation. For a lot of things, I tend to be almost this very rabid sort of free speechish kind of guy i really don't like the idea of sort of being you know well let's let's you know be careful that we don't offend anyone um on the other hand i also really don't like the idea of causing unnecessary discomfort to people and you know i i know i'm 100 percent within my rights to say it's like well if you don't like it you cannot watch the stream but it'd be kind of nice if people who like my stuff don't need to consider whether or not they're going to see something that makes them feel uncomfortable on on stream. So um, I don't dislike uh, South Park for its uh, its depiction of Canadians. I mean, it's <laughs> I don't know if it's particularly funny because I'm not entirely sure what the joke about Canadians is from the way they're depicted. Um, but you know, I also sort of accept in the case of South Park, if I were to get mad at them because they depicted Canadians a certain way or something that's sort of one of my deeply held beliefs, um, I'd sort of be a bit of a, a bit of a hypocrite for laughing at like the Scientology one or something like that. So, um, um, I wish to become a better Catholic has led me to the rule of St. Benedict. Since I joined the Benedictine order, I have practiced chival chivalry, yet it was not today until today that I realized that I was glad to let go of my personal possession. Oh, charity, not chivalry. Uh, I realized I was truly glad to let go of my personal possession. Helping those in need is truly fulfilling. Okay, well, fortunately, I don't get a decrease to stewardship for that, so. Yeah, and it's it's tricky, uh, Domi. It's, it's one of these things where, you know, whenever I, whenever I say something like that, I always know there's a lot of nuance in terms of how I think about these things and how I react to them that's going to get lost. Uh, I would not blame people for walking away sort of thinking is like, oh yeah, you know, he's a bit of a bit of a stick in the mud, you know, he doesn't doesn't like cool stuff or, you know, he's, he's one of these people who wants to put trigger warnings on everything. I'm like, well, nope, looks like Istra is in a bit of trouble, so we will rally the troops. You know, I'm not entirely, so like, I've, actually, here's a better example. So, um, I have a deep love of uh, the work of the Roman poet Ovid. He's very possibly my favorite poet, possibly uh, my favorite, it, it's possibly my favorite literature ever. Uh, and there is his great work, um, Metamorphoses. And in one sense, I, like, I recommend it to everyone because it's just this amazing, constantly shifting tour from creation to the apotheosis of Caesar um, and like it's all of Greek myth in this one constant ever shifting tale every story is about um, change it's just this it's just unbelievably good like and Shakespeare's pulled away from it I mean there's tons of stuff uh, from Shakespeare inside of it um but there is a lot of rape in it. Um, and I can give you some really specific reasons about why it's maybe not important, but the point that is being made there, because it's very specifically the gods, and there are some very there are some very important messages about power that are being communicated inside of it. Uh, and some of it may have been something that Ovid intended, and some of it may not have been. But with that in mind, and knowing that everybody has their own different life experience, I sometimes need to consider, you know, who do I recommend this to? And will people, you know, I do know people who've reacted very strongly to Ovid. Um, and in one sense, I think one of the great tragedies is that great literature like this can't be appreciated by people who, for whom it might be a little too 
um, direct. And I see nothing wrong with giving these people fair warning in terms of the, the content. That just seems to be a very decent thing to do. Um, now, on the other hand, sort of this question of, you know, should we ban the teaching of it in a school? Well, I don't really know anybody who's advocating for that. And I would say that the work, um, I think the work stands on its own and is worthy um, by those those lights. And I think, I haven't seen South Park recently, so, you know, at least what I've seen, I think you can make an argument along those lines, but it's definitely not Ovid. Um, and I can definitely, like, I think the biggest thing is that South Park, it's a little bit easier for me, for someone to say, it's like, you know what, I don't really like South Park that much. I would not turn around and say, but don't you see the genius of Trey Parker and Matt Stone? No, not really. I'm just like, okay, let's watch Dr. Strangelove instead, because that's also a really funny movie, and I think it's, you know, I think that's also a really great satire, but it doesn't necessarily require, um... I don't think it necessarily requires trying to push the boundary as as far as possible. So, uh, you finish the stick of truth, and there's nothing uh, less streaming appropriate in your opinion. The game is not blocked for Twitch. You don't know what game should be. Uh, I believe it is actually still playable on Twitch, but I'm not sure a hundred percent. Yet another morning where I wake up feeling as tired as when I went to bed. I should do something about my listless mind. Perhaps I need to spend some time alone. So I can seclude myself in prayer and meditation, or ah, I'll get over it eventually. Love the RPG, though, and from what you've heard, it's a good synthesis of the show. Yeah, I mean, there was one South Park game before that, which apparently was nothing like the show. It really did come off as sort of this, like, cash grab. Um, now, obviously, the people who made Stick of Truth uh, are Obsidian, who just recently bought by Microsoft along with In Exile Entertainment, and there was another group. I mean, Microsoft has just been buying up all the great, uh, all the great, um, uh, you know, game game developers lately. It seems. Um, so, you know, it's um, given the fact that. You know, it's a, an Obsidian game. Like, I would have a pretty high expectation that it'd be very well made. And I personally, I will very likely play it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've I've definitely seen some elements inside of it. And I'm like, I, you know, again, like, maybe there is some value in having a conversation about what, you know, about taste and about... I mean, if you want, I've got a ton of, like, Roman, you know, Roman poets who would make South Park blush. Um, you know, if I want, I can definitely talk about content and, you know, is there such a thing as too far? Um, I just think there are better ways of, of making that point uh, that don't require me playing a game for which I know at least some part of the audience would feel uncomfortable. Um, and that has a little bit less of me saying that, you know, Stick of Truth should never be played on Twitch, and a lot more about me being that, you know, if I had somebody over who was a vegetarian, you know, I would make sure that there was a vegetarian option for dinner. I'm under no obligation to do so, but why the hell am I inviting them into my place if I'm not going to do that? Alright, we have protect our, protected our holdings. Uh, Isaacson says, I'm not terribly clean, keen on South Park. From what you've seen of it, Jenny bothered you a little bit. You understand why people find it funny, but you grew up with people who used lines from South Park to mock and hurt others. Yeah, it's it's tough, right? Like, and... Like, when I watched the show, I always found it funny, and I always found it enjoyable. Um, so I actually have a feeling that I would personally quite enjoy the game. Um, and again, it's the difference between playing... Uh, playing the game in public for people and privately enjoying it. Um, so you have a little bias against child uh, South Park from childhood bullying. Yeah. And yeah, and this is the big thing. Like for me, that's a personal opinion. Like I, I would not, I personally don't see any benefit in people uh, drawing some general rule from the way I react. I mean, it's, you can think of it like Crusader Kings too, right? Like I will say statements like, oh, I'm going to take over this land because they have the wrong religion. That is a terrible thing to say. This is something that has generated a ton of misery in the world and is the worst possible reason you could want to try and take territory. But there's a certain context towards this, and I don't think anybody who is watching the stream has any confusion in terms of what's intended by it. Uh, and if I felt that somebody did have a difference, 
a different view on that. I would think very carefully in terms of what it is. And I also think Paradox thinks that way about this game as well. I think this game is designed to make you say as many appalling things as possible, but I also think all of the appalling things that you do are so over the top that you you don't walk away with this impression that the game is anti-Islam or anti-pagan or anti-Christian or, you know, like if, you know, it is a, it's a, it does a wonderful job of capturing the tensions between all of these things without making it, you know, a great example in terms of France, when the, um, the, uh, the Charlie Hebdo um, uh, murders happened, uh, there was, of course, the, you know, the, the statement that so many people said of Je suis Charlie, um, but members of the, you know, the National Front and, and more nationalist focuses, uh, sorry, more nationalist groups uh, were saying Je suis Charlie Martel, uh, Charles Martel being uh, one of the um, sort of the predecessors for Charlemagne who fought the um, sort of the uh, their version of events would be that they they fought uh, fought the Muslims to a standstill um, at Spain. Uh, some might also say that they just simply stopped the conquests because the climate was not to their liking and they'd already just took everything that they wanted. Um, but uh, you know, I'm not necessarily going to adjudicate that particular historical matter. But clearly. Um, you know, you could, if you want, you can pull up some really ugly nationalist themes. Grand Admiral Thrawn, 25th of your name. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate that follow. Um, obviously, if you want, you can pull out these really ugly themes from a game like this. But I think you have to be looking and you have to deliberately be doing that. I think one of the things that's so fun about... Crusader Kings 2 is you get to behave, you kind of get to indulge the id a little bit, but you never do so in a way that you feel you're causing like real harm or that you're really stoking some kind of, um, you know, some kind of maybe darker uh, side. So, all right. Bringing the true faith and salvation to others is among the holiest of duties. Therefore, we ask you to construct a new church in your land so that subjects may have somewhere to say prayers and worship. I would love to, but I'm broke. Uh, since it's genuinely you have nothing against it, I don't think it goes too far for the most part. You personally just have a slight distaste for it. You mean you make dead uh, mom jokes? Yeah, I do too. Um, this is one of the worst things, you know, I, whenever somebody says, you know, oh, I'm you know, sorry about your mom, um, I'm like, oh no, it's the best thing she did for me. I get to tell so many jokes now at her expense and she's not around to care about it. And like that, people have gotten angry on my behalf uh, on that. And I'll admit that is in pretty poor taste. Um, but again, it's, it's something of a, I think it's something of a, um, you know, it's a judgment call, right? It's like many things in the world. Um, you, it's not that there's a giant manual for how the world works that tells you what your, you know, like, I kind of think if you think that there's a big instruction manual somewhere that tells you this is the absolute best way to behave in all circumstances and that all of life is just figuring out what that rule book is you're probably doing it wrong sometimes it's just a matter of appreciating that there's ambiguities in situations and that you need to read the other person have a little bit of empathy and if you step the wrong way it is you know situations are never so dire you can't say i apologize or just generally do what you can to smooth things over. That's how you become a better person. That's how you grow. So Domi has said, you know, a lot of comedians who are legit terrible people and say that their jokes are political statements and vice versa when it's convenient. The staff of South Park really don't seem to be one of the... Yeah, I mean, well, this is one of the things. I will I will credit uh, South Park with consistency. Um, you know, I, I... And that's... You know, that is sometimes a hard, uh, that's a hard one to hit for some people. I, I know that for sure. Let me just catch up with some of these messages, both in game and in chat. Uh, what else did we have? Thrawn says 25 is just your favorite number. I still prefer saying 25th of the name, because then I also get to say out of all of the 25 Grand Admiral Thrawns, you are my favorite. But thank you very much for that follow. It's really cool to have you in here, especially because I know we're having a little bit of uh, trouble 
um, with the uh, with the transcodes. I know everybody's kind of stuck at the top level, unless that's changed. But um, I was a little annoyed at Twitch for that, but I'm still able to stream for you guys, so we'll make the most of it. Uh, SCSF says, yeah, in CK2, one game you're a crusader conquering the holy land for the glory of Jesus, and the next one you're the caliph stomping the Romans for the glory of the prophet. <laughs> uh, peace be upon him. Uh, Domi says, you got lazy because it's like 500 episodes. Yeah, I have, yeah, I did not, uh, I definitely did not, um, I've not seen all 500. I've seen some of the earlier ones, and I think I saw, I, I did find the trapped in the closet one very amusing. Um, I am slightly ashamed to admit. I think we'll teach this fellow stewardship. Uh, Isis and your mom would genuinely find them funny. Jokes like, yeah, yeah, just make sure to call mom over the holidays. You just have to dust off the Ouija board. You have to admit you laughed at that. Uh, you mean sometimes laughing is the best kind of coping. Yeah, well, that's just it. Like, you know, when... So one of the things I've personally found oh cool we've got better knowledge of heavy infantry what i've personally found like when people are obviously uncomfortable knowing that uh i mean so there's the other like there's the euphemisms that people use right it's like you know oh you know i'm so sorry you lost your mother like ah she'll turn up um you know there's that or um you know, if somebody just feel it, it's it's clear that people are very uncomfortable, and like I need to do something to break the tension. I you know I usually just go it's like ah oh, yeah, but life goes on. Well, for most of us anyway. You know that sort of stuff. If you can deliver it the right right way, it sort of eases the tension. And clearly, if you just continue to make light of it, I haven't really met someone who who I think. Um, you know, who are, are so, um, you know, so kind of hung up on it that that I really felt I needed to walk on egg, eggshells. Um, but obviously, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, make someone feel just in a total, like, I, I don't want, I don't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable just for the sake of, of my laugh. Like, I can amuse myself in other ways. Usually, if I just have a chat with Sin, I, that's that's enough for me to to get some really tasteless jokes out of the way at both of our expense. So, what on earth did you come into? The stream's been fine for you. Okay, that's good to hear, uh, Captain Shield. Uh, Domi went from behavioral economics to South Bog to dead mom jokes, to the number twenty-five, and now back to dead mom jokes. Lemony says people are so uncomfortable talking about death. Incredible, considering it's inevitable for all of us. I mean, there, what is it? The, it's like the Woody Allen line, you know, "I plan on living forever." So far, so good. I'm currently under the illusion that I'll continue to live forever. Don't dispel me of this illusion, Lemony. It's all that it's all that I have left. Uh, welcome, by the way, guys. For if you have not encountered her yet, do check her out. I have not had a chance to play Stellaris with her in what feels like forever, and I don't know if that's just because I got stopped getting invitations because I never attended, uh, or if they've been on hiatus. But uh, a wonderful member of the community. Actually, she's one of the reasons why I want to do Surviving Mars VODs because it was her and K5 who came by and made it such an enjoyable experience. We did do about seven and a half hours or so of it. I'll be returning to it, but obviously Mondays are dedicated to the Grand Strategy Games uh, and the Italian populace in Verona embracing Lombard culture. Civilized peasants? Um, but yes, definitely, definitely check her out, or at the very least check out K5, where you get a chance to see her sparkling personality as a moderator. What have you been playing lately, uh, Malemony? I haven't been able to catch your stream, so I don't I don't even know if you have, have been streaming lately. Uh, but in fairness, I can say the same to all of my subscribed channels, except for Johnny Big Time, because I actually really wanted to know what Battlefield Five looked like. <laughs> and, oh my goodness, that is a wonderful game. Um, what else do we have? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Malemony. You've been streaming drawing. I did not know you were an artist. What do you like to draw? And while we're waiting, I think I'm going to boost the speed up a little bit just so we can carry on with the game. By the way, if anybody has any questions about the game, I will maybe caution you that because we're not playing the Holy Fury patch, I'm not going to be great as a tutorial for the version of the game you'll be playing, but I think some of the principles are still the same. So if you're curious about my current goals right now, uh, I did manage to get a little bit of um, 
a little bit of territory already. My main one right now is just to get back into uh, positive territory as far as money. We're pr I'm pretty lucky that uh, we only have one smuggler's ring that's developed as a result of my uh, my poor financial management. Uh, we have paid back the money lenders. All right, looks like we've got raiders, so we'll deal with that. I'm holding control uh, just to keep my... Basically, I'm holding control to keep my... Um, my troops in, in this territory from getting clobbered. Uh, so let's take these guys. We'll combine them all in Treviso. We'll wait for these fellows. Uh, we'll move them in, but we'll move them in as sort of a support uh, once the Treviso army moves into and to deal with the host. Um, and then of course I can, I can raise the forces as soon as these guys come in, although we'll certainly outnumber them um, already. But yeah, sort of short-term goal is to get my wealth back to where it needs to be, just to make sure that I'm able to sort of finance any campaigns that I go on. We're going to run down the clock to make sure that uh, we can take our remaining uh, county from Croatia. Hopefully we get to do that before the King of Croatia dies. We, I, I'm slightly tempted to try and assassinate them just so that this can be incorporated into Lombardy so that I can make an effort on the crown. Um, but it does look like the kingdom is fairly stable right now and I do have some blood uh, ties both to Croatia and to uh, the kingdom of Lombardy. So I'm probably going to hold off on that for now. Um... And yeah, really it's about the money right now. Um, and like I said, it's a, a little bit about fiscal consolidation as well as territorial consolidation, but we'll only have one more territory to claim afterwards. Uh, Makina 4. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm happy to see that you're still here. I wasn't sure if you've been around. You've played this in your, your Universalis 4 on and off, but you generally don't play very long. There's just too much stuff for you to keep track of. Absolutely. And you know, the one thing that's really funny about this Nakina 2 it's they're two totally opposite perspectives so in crusader kings 2 if you're patient playing as a count is one of the best things you can do if you're a little impatient playing as a duke tends to give you a little bit more to do but being small is a virtue in this game because you have sort of your lord to protect you from the worst of the world and then, of course, and again, because this is a reflection of the fact that Crusader Kings 2 is about the interpersonal relationships, about that relationship between the vassal and the liege, and trying to keep that and the world built around that relationship. And of course, Europa Universalis 4 is the exact opposite. It's about the transition from that world into the world of the nation state. And in that particular world, you want to be the biggest, baddest blob you possibly can be. You want to be the Ottomans, you want to be France. If you're particularly bold, you want to be Russia, or rather found Russia, out of Muscovy. You know, like, there's there's only a few things that you want to play in that game if you want to have an easy time. Um, so especially if you, you know, especially if you're starting, this is actually not a bad advice for some of you who are considering playing games like this. Like, it is important to remember sort of what the unit of observation this game is for the game, because that will have a very... Like, if you play Ulm in this game, you'll probably have a pretty decent time. If you play Ulm in Europa Universalis 4, <laughs> you are going to have a very horrible time. Uh, or the time of your life, if you know what you're doing. But, um, I always play Holland, but... Um... But yeah, I totally, I totally know what you're saying. Is it the, the problem, Nikina, for me is that you know because this is very much like what I do for work and very much what like what I just generally like do in my spare time. Like I love big, complicated games like this where you need to keep track of a hundred things and like you come up with these ten, twenty, even multi generational uh, plans. Um, and uh, I just love sort of you know planting those seeds and seeing which ones grow. Uh, but it's definitely not for everyone, and some people just like watching this instead. Um, what else? Oh yeah, Melemony says you never ever heard System Shock. Yeah, so in in fairness, I that was not real rage. I don't know how clear that is to people or not, and I'm mildly concerned about it because that was definitely affected. If you want, I will do it again now. I thought it would be funny, and then I got really worried once people started saying it was actual rage. Um, Grand Animal Throng got CK2 last Saturday, and you're loving it. That's awesome. Was it on sale because of uh, Holy Fury? I don't know, because I, I didn't notice uh, any sales on it. But 
Uh, I'm glad you're having a good time. How did you? I'm curious. How did you find the tutorial? Was it helpful at all, or is it a little uh, is a little old? Uh, let me just catch up with uh, with the game, and then I'll I'll get back to chat. I believe one of your vassals can be discouraged from associated with conspiratorial factions if the proper leverage is obtained. How do you wish to proceed? Okay. Well, this is the um, this is the one who wants to uh, increase council power. I don't really need to worry so much about it. Because, um, I mean, she's definitely someone who... She's definitely someone who is... Like, she's gonna hate me because I took her, I took her title. Um, that's, that much is apparent. Although I'm pretty sure I can just revoke her, her county now. Um, and I don't really have a lot to fear because I don't think she's going to be able to bring up the power. But as it is, you know, because I don't like her, I might as well make life difficult for her. So in this case, we'll just blackmail her. Because she's an adulteress. Uh, what else do we have? Eyes of Sin says, speaking of coping with humor, uh, we once had a therapist a while back who, during the first session, asked you to lay out your life story and issues as condensed as very possible. So you list lifted off every traumatic event as such through your life in a very monotone and dry way. The Andy looked at you wide eye and said, I see you're going to be one of my regulars. <laughs> Man, I, I got to give that guy credit for selling that line. Um... um and Nikina says, you have a friend who is 239 hours in EU4. He's uh, the one that got you playing these games. You ended up liking CK2 a bit more. Uh, CK2 was the first one I played, and I... Uh, I mean, I have... Let's take a look. 650 hours in CK2 and 314 hours in Europa Universalis 4. So I think the, you know, the times speak for themselves. Uh, obviously, a majority of time in CK2 has been broadcasting it. But, I mean, I don't broadcast something I don't enjoy playing. Uh, and again, I, I really feel it's a it's a perspective uh, matter. I just think whether you're interested in the time period or you're just... I think basically, if you're a schemer and you, you know, maybe you're one of those people who likes to work the room at a party, or maybe you just kind of like trying to, to work out the relationships in such a way that you advance yourself or something like that, you'll probably like CK2 more. And if you sort of like this idea, you know, if you just live this, you know, l'état c'est moi. If, if like, you've got a big old poster of, like, Louis XIV just up on your, your wall, and, you know, you, you give it a small kiss every night, like, you'll love EU4. Um, and I think the, th the thing that's neat is they're so different, you can love both. Um, and I think I've been playing a little more EU4 lately, but I also think it's because I've just been... Like I've done so much in CK2, um, but obviously I'm I'm streaming CK2, so it's 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 good. Tutorial was okay, and it helped with things uh, you didn't know, but most of the mechanics you already knew. That's cool. So did you watch the game beforehand, and you just kind of took the plunge, or or did you just kind of jump in and learn, and you feel comfortable learning games? Um, I'm in the latter category, but I'm always really curious how people come into this game because it's great and it's got such a a big reputation and. Let's keep in mind, this game's, I think, six years old now, so that's no small feat. Um, but I'm always fascinated about how people get into it. Um, only a little, uh, Domi. I, I, don't, um, I don't know it well enough to be uh, fully conversant. We do have bi uh, bilingual positions in the government, and I don't believe I would qualify for one of them. But uh, I do my best. And I live in a city where, genuinely, if you see somebody on the street, it's about a 50-50 chance whether or not they'll start speaking English or French. So I, I really wish I, I understood more than I do. Uh, Though I curse your name, I will comply with your unfair demand. Just keep the sensitive information to yourself. I apparently can tell good jokes in French, which made me very happy. Uh, and that is from uh, someone from Paris, not from Quebec. So, which makes me wonder if like my my, my Quebecois French is, is atrocious. We'll find out, I suppose. But who knows? Maybe um, maybe if I become competent at French, thirtieth. Uh, okay, yep. And then we will raise the final levy once these guys uh, come crashing in. Uh, maybe once I become competent in French, I'll do a I'll do a French broadcast for you. 
You watched this game a lot before. Alex the Rambler introduced you to Hearts of Iron 4. You've loved many Paradox games since. And that's really cool too. Um, I actually, so funny fact, I knew Alex the Rambler in Vancouver. I met him in a bar, a gamer bar. And I remember when he said that he much preferred uh, Total War to Crusader Kings 2. But now I know him a lot more as a Hearts of Iron 4 streamer. Um, I quite like Hearts of Iron 4, although it's the it's the paradox game I'm the worst at, and I think it's because it's a lot more like a traditional war game. And I love traditional war games, but I tend to think of paradox games in Crusader Kings 2 and um, Europa Universalis terms. And like in the case of Hearts of Iron 4, it really is a big focus on sort of military matters, the population exists basically to either be put in a tank, a plane, a ship, or like grab a gun and go to the front line. Uh, I love the production aspects behind it, and uh, the, I think one of the big problems is, is that I find it so much more interesting to play Canada because I know a bit about Canadian history in World War II. Uh, and of course the big thing is if you play Canada you don't get to be a power player in the game. Uh, and I, I, I genuinely like playing like Will, you know, William Lyon, Mackenzie King, proper liberal democracy Canada, not like fascist Canada, not communist Canada, although somebody talked me into doing that once and I felt horrible. Um, but uh, I'm pretty garbage at the combat in Hearts of Iron 4 and I wish I wish I could get better. But I tend to notice the problems I run into is that my production and my sort of massing up of troops is pretty inefficient. So like if I play Germany, I wind up doing the Anschluss way too late because I uh, I just don't generate enough troops. But I only realize that long after the fact that it's become a problem. And so I still have sort of my teething troubles in terms of Hearts of Iron 4. Although if you guys have any recommendations in terms of a good place to maybe not tell me how to play Hearts of Iron 4, but maybe learn some principles, I've been looking at the Wiki, uh, the Paradox Wiki, which for those of you who are learning games, by the way, uh, I do I do pretty uh, I do pretty strongly recommend the Paradox uh, wikis. There's CK2 Wiki, there's uh, EU4 Wiki, there's one for Victoria 2. Uh, there's actually ones even for the published games. So if you like Surviving Mars, that'll give you some information as well. They have everything from beginner's guides to more advanced concepts. And so if you ever get stuck in a game, I do like Paradox has really put a lot of effort into building up resources that will help you learn the games. They're very much on side with the sorry, this is going to sound like a sales pitch. So <laughs> this one, I'm, I, you know, I can tell you, I, you know, I'm I have gotten some DLC for Crusader Kings 2 before uh, was Monks and Mystics and um, I know they've given me something else before. Uh, I believe Reapers do. Um, uh, but the current version, like, um, I, I I paid my own way for Jade, uh, Jade Empire because I didn't think I would be able to cover it at the time. So, um, so yeah, with that in mind, you know, I have been treated very well by, by Paradox in the past, so there's a small interest in there. But I like recommending this stuff because I like playing this stuff. I, I am not so easily bought. Um, the only CK2 that you bought was the Old Gods? Is that because you have press keys for the other ones, or is it just because that was the only one you were interested in, uh, Nak uh, Nakina? And sorry, I think I missed Malemony's uh, response to the drawing question. Oh, illustrations in large-scale acrylics. Sorry about that, um, Lemony. I missed the I missed the statement. Um, and Isaacson, you've been looking for a drawing to show you guys uh, that someone did for you after the joke was made. I'm Batman, but poor and with tits because you uh, are technically an orphan, and your friend Lev drew this for you. Let me just take a quick look. <laughs> That's funny. That also definitely looks like something that Levney drew. Uh, I, by the way, guys, Eyes of Sin actually knows quite a few famous and very interesting people. So I am not one of them, by the way. Um, but uh, is Surviving Mars? Surviving Mars is published by Paradox. So the people that make uh, Crusader Kings 2, Victoria 2, Europa Universalis 4, Hearts of Iron 4, Stellaris, and the soon to be released uh, uh, Imperator or Imperator. Um, is Paradox Development Studio, so that is their in-house 
development group who make their own games. But Paradox is also a publisher who've done everything from Magicka to uh, Pillars of Eternity, Tyranny. I really like Tyranny, actually, uh, and I suspect if there's going to be a sequel, it will be under Microsoft. Um, but uh, uh, Hamimont Games is the developer of Surviving Mars, but Paradox is the publisher. Um, and uh, I think Susie and Nikki were the ones to do the, the Paradox streams for them. They're very entertaining. Um, so, although personally, I, I tend to play the Paradox games a lot more than watch them, so. Uh, and was it the only one that you were interested in? That's, that's cool. I mean, the nice thing about the Old Gods was it did definitely give you the earlier timeline as well. Um, I personally am interested in Charlemagne, so that was one of the first ones that I picked up myself. Um, but I just tended to find that I just sort of shuffled the things in over time. Actually, you know what? That's a really good point. Let me just give me a quick second, uh, to bring up the CK2 wiki. So, for those of you who have this game, and maybe you don't have all the DLC, here's a great resource for you. Uh, do you have the character creator? That's the only DLC that you have so far. I actually don't have the character creator. The two pieces, or sorry, three pieces of DLC I don't have now. I don't have Holy Fury, uh, I don't have the character creator, and I don't have uh, Sunset Invasion, because Sunset Invasion just didn't interest me. Uh, but for those of you who are interested, every patch comes with a uh, sort of a, there's a free patch and then there's the paid DLC and if you have Crusader Kings 2 and you're interested in deciding you know I kind of want to expand the game out I want to try something a little bit more obviously follow your interest first if you are interested in Rome Legacy of Rome if you want to play a Caliphate Sword of Islam if you like Merchant Republics and I do the Republic was like the first thing that I bought. And of course, the Wealth of Nations was the first EU4 DLC because what self-respecting economist would buy any other one? Um, but basically, one of the things that's sort of nice about this, I mean, I have my own personal recommendations and I'm happy to give them, but one of the things that you can do on that main page, on the right-hand side, there's all of the DLC for this game, and it will actually tell you what was given away for free with the, with the patch. I, basically, these are things that you've already been playing with. And which things uh, do you feel, you know, what concepts interest you the most? So, for instance, if you want to play Jade Empire, you'll notice you can't play China, right? It's not here. But that's not the only thing that's in it. In fact, there are things that are not at all related to China in there. Although, you know, I would maybe suggest to you that if you have no interest in eastern um, counties, maybe wait for it to go on sale, you know. Um, but uh, basically, it's one of these things if you're sort of like, you know, I think the societies are really interesting. And so Monks and Mystics uh, is a, you know, is a really good one to, to pick up. I actually particularly enjoy uh, the Hermetic Society, but you can really do anything uh, inside the game. And so in one sense, you can always ask people their opinions, but I also think one of the questions is, is, you know, what are you finding that's lacking in your playthrough? So for instance, if you notice that your account and you're just sort of sitting around waiting for things to happen, well, one of the things that societies do is they give you things to do while you're waiting, and that makes the game a little bit more interesting. If you like more role-playing options, a lot of people said that Way of Life was a bit of a disappointment. I actually think it's one of the better DLCs out there because it gives you so many things to do with these different focuses. Um, and again, I mean, if all you can do is like sit around in a drafty castle, go to church once a week, and maybe, you know, go into the scullery maid's quarters and give her a good tumble, um, you know, yeah, like sometimes you want to join us, you know, a secret society, or maybe you want to go and, and become a gardener or something like that, anything to break the monotony. Um, so there's a few different things. Now, again, I don't mean to imply that the game is boring. It's anything but. Um, but depending on where you sort of would like to see your own little adventure go, you don't need to buy all the DLC at once. You're very likely going to be overwhelmed. But if you have a couple of things where you're like, well, wouldn't it be nice if you could do X? Um, and then, of course, you could be somebody who's like, you know what? I'm just happy with Vikings. Vikings forever. I'm buying the old gods, and I'm sticking with that. <laughs> so... Hey, K5. Um, is it not one of them? You're like the Alexis and Lottie's mainstream. That's not true at all. Um, Call of Cthulhu is a huge streamer who, who plays that game. Um, 
but they have been very kind with their attention to me. I, I will tell you that for sure. For those of you who don't know, uh, there's a wonderful game called Culta Simulator, which I normally play on Wednesdays, won't be playing this Wednesday, but please do check it out. And by the way, guys, I know I've been on pause for a little bit, but I'm going to take a quick second here and briefly mention K5. For those of you who heard the Melemony shout out, this is the guy that Melemony uh, mods for, although of course she is a streamer in her own right. Uh, if you like some of the sci-fi stuff that I do, K5 is great at No Man's Sky, um, Stellaris, Endless, sorry, not Endless Space, um, Elite Dangerous, um, all of this stuff. Now again, he also does things like Skyrim and such. It's not that he's just only a science fiction streamer, but he's definitely somebody who I can recommend along those lines. And of course, he's a very devoted fan of Culta Simulator, which is the main reason for me to like any given streamer. So definitely feel free to give him a, give him a follow if you're interested in those kinds of things. Have you ever played the Middle Earth Project mod? Uh, it's a Lord of the Rings mod. I have not. Uh, the only, I've only played the Game of Thrones one, which I rather enjoyed, but I'm... I'm like the worst Paradox game player in the world because I'm not that good at playing with mods. I haven't even played that much Kaiser Reich, and I know that used to be like the way to play Hearts of Iron 4. Um, but is it something that you would recommend? Uh, is it something that I should should give it a shot, uh, Admiral Thon? Uh, with your strong devotion to the Catholic faith, you have spent countless hours reading the Bible and thinking about the meaning and origin of the sacred words therein. There are some things that don't quite correspond to what the priests are saying in this sermon, however. So I have no right to question them. I gained some piety. Perhaps it should not be taken quite so literally after all. Now, Zealous gives me piety, martial, uh, but some negatives for opposite religions, or the priests are charlatans, uh, and I become a Cathar. Now, I would love to do this, uh, but I'm a little scared, so I have no right to question them. What is my stream schedule? Well, uh, normally I do Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Now, I suspect you're probably here because I did not know there was my little pony mod for Stellaris. That is a way to go. <laughs> um, so, Thrawn, I usually broadcast Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, I do have a pretty healthy work schedule. So uh, I normally start anywhere between 7 or 8 Eastern time. Fridays, I usually start later. Um, now, uh, if you're here for Paradox, I regret to inform you that Mondays are the dedicated Paradox day, and that's just partially because I have a lot of stuff on my plate at the moment. Uh, if you like Stellaris and you've played the Horizon Signal and you've not played the Cultus Simulator, um, Cultus Simulator is by the author of the Horizon Signal, uh, and that's a game that uh, basically it, the company that makes it is called Weather Factory. It consists of two people, Alexis Kennedy and Lottie Bevan, two incredibly talented and very kind game designers. I strongly recommend checking them out if you haven't. Um, and uh, there's a new DLC that recently came out for Cultus Simulator. And one of the nice things is if you bought the game uh, on the Kickstarter or in the first week of sale, you actually get lifetime access to the DLC. So we've been playing through that new DLC recently. So that's my usual Wednesdays. Uh, if you've never heard of Cult of Simulator, it's sort of a, it's a story. It's like a narrative card game almost. Uh, it's, it, there is nothing else like it out there. Uh, so I definitely recommend either checking out one of the VODs or stopping by on Wednesday. Uh, I do need to let everybody know that this Wednesday I will most likely be at the Dirty Rectangles uh, local game dev meetup. Again, I'm not a game dev on my own. Uh, I don't think that's where my talents are. But there are a lot of really interesting people there and uh, I, I really like getting this perspective and I... If somebody has a project that they want to get out there, I would love to be able to sort of maybe not give back, but I think there's a bit of a sort of a, a nice um, sort of mutual benefit there, which is I get a chance to show you guys something unexpected. You know, even if I just wind up buying the game because I do want to support, you know, local talent and normally the games aren't that costly. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's a chance for me to show you guys something you haven't seen before. So I obviously have a slightly smaller audience, but uh, it's a group of people who are interested in sort of off the beaten track things. So, and to give you an idea, the Ottawa game development community is not like, it, it's not just a bunch of pet projects like Keep Talking Nobody Explodes is made here, Cuphead was made here. Um, there's one called Hexagon Falls, which is coming. Oh no, it's not called Hexagon Falls anymore. I need to get back to you as to what it's currently called. Um, you know, there are some serious games that are getting made here, and they're really interesting. Um, so, 
Uh, and again, every once in a while, I, I share out these links and that. And most importantly, they're just people who are very, they have very interesting perspectives. And I like, um, I like hearing them. So it's, it's always very rewarding to go to those meetups. I know it means that I, I'm not able to cast on that Wednesday, but I think it's a, it's, I can justify it as a stream um, activity. Um, but it's also just a life thing. Like it's interesting to meet people like this. And one of the biggest rewards of streaming has actually been able to get to know a few more developers as a result of this. So it's, you know, it, it carries with it some personal benefits, uh, maybe ones that are totally irrelevant to your entertainment. So it's once a month, I'm taking it. Uh, Fridays are a little bit more of a free one. Uh, recently we've been doing, um, Mass Effect 2, although uh, we're currently going through the Battlefield 5 story mode. Battlefield 5 is wonderful, by the way. Uh, obviously, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know it always under it sells less than Call of Duty. Uh, I think they're great games, and I think number 5 is a spectacular shooter. I agree completely. Kirk McKeon gave a very good... It's not a 100% glowing review. He actually has some very legitimate criticisms of it, uh, but I think he's right when he says it's the best shooter of 2018. Um... And then if you don't mind VOD content, uh, every Tuesday I do a... Uh, yes, actually, let me get that link up here for you. By here you mean Canada. Yes, yes, sorry. Let me just... Uh... Okay, we're just we're going to get the whole advertising thing out of the way and then we can properly dig into the game. Uh, let, me, uh, let me find this link. Uh, this is for the Elder Scrolls, so you good people can enjoy the VODcast. Come on. There we go. So if you guys uh, if you guys are interested in the playthrough, I do do a slightly softer, but um, I don't know. I sort of think this somewhat resembles a dark elf voice. Um, but we're getting close to the end, I think. Um, last uh the last one i recorded was quite amusing um uh what else were we saying um but yeah so those are those are currently going every tuesday at least for as long as uh elder scrolls arena lasts and then i'm going to if i can uh start doing some surviving mars streams on thursdays but i may not be able to turn that into a regular weekly thing because i do actually need to record them and I have to have a life outside of it so um Anyways, uh, Thrawn recommends um, recommends the uh, sorry recommends the Lord of the Rings Middle Earth one. I will definitely give it a give it a shot. Then thank you for the recommendation. Um, and what else? You'll be waiting for Steam's next sale. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Domi, there's no there's no need to rush. I, clearly, I know Paradox would love it if you'd pay full price for the game, and that's completely fine. People should be paid what they are worth but you also should pay what you think the thing is worth. If, if you've been able to get this far in your life without playing Crusader Kings 2, I'm sure a few more months won't hurt you. Um, but, uh, but yeah. I, I, I think this is a good game. Um, it's not for everyone, but it's, it's worth it. Uh, what else did we have? Time for commercials, folk. Love the Kaius voice. <laughs> All right, um, and I should let you know that those are archived both on Twitch and on YouTube. So if you want to see the thing from the very beginning, if you want to know what my vocal cords sound like after God knows how many hours of doing that voice, well, <laughs> you can see the whole archive of it. That, and by the way, that is not uh, that is not um, hostage to my uh, to my my work hours that will always start at seven unless the thing did not upload and uh, the transcodes didn't work basically unless there is a problem uploading it uh, it will always be at seven o'clock sharp and that will uh, you know I, I usually announce on Twitter if there's a problem with it so uh, since I came to Pavia we've never had a shortage of soldiers reinforcing our troops sorry for those of you I know we lost a few uh, a few viewers there but that's fine, because I do have a tendency to chat a little bit. Um, but uh, I think... Um, where was I? Sorry. Um, I do think... Uh, sorry, I just totally blanked a minute ago. 
Watch my stuff. The chattiness is what she followed you for. I appreciate that, uh, Nikina. Well, this is one of the things, too. Like, I... I am sometimes conscious of the fact that there can be a better balance between the uh, the digressions and the games. But given the fact that you don't know where a conversation will take you, um, I think there is more value in being... So, if there is one thing that I could say that I try to do on this stream, and I don't always succeed in it, in fact, I very often fail at it, and this will probably sound incredibly puffed up, and it probably is, and I apologize for that. Um, if there are 50 people who wind up watching a video, and it sort of bounces off of them, that's okay, because they're going to find some other form of entertainment. Um, obviously, I don't have a face cam. Eyes of Sin can tell you exactly why. Um, they're... You know, I rely entirely on the game sort of presented, unadorned, and my thinking through the game. And when I play a game, very rarely do I just think, okay, I'm going to click on Verona, and now I'm going to see, oh, nope, I don't have any technology. Okay, well, maybe now I'm just going to go to Istra, and I'm going to click this button here. Oh, wait, I don't have money. Like, I don't think anybody actually thinks this way when they play a video game. There's ideas that are constantly rattling around your head. And one of the most rewarding experiences for me, in fact, this will probably be that thing I was going to mention to you earlier, Domi, like, one of the first gaming experiences that I had on a PC, now I'd played, uh, you know, sort of like a Nintendo at somebody's house before, but my parents were a bit older, and so there would be these families where they'd be, like, visiting, and the kids would be older, so, like, they'd be out of the house, and they definitely don't want to play with, like, a little kid. Uh, but there was a computer, and I loved computers. So this uh, family had Civilization two, I think it was, on that computer. So it was a bit old by that time. I can't remember exactly. I know there was, like, this long period where there was, like, a division in terms of who had the rights to make a Civilization game. So I can't... I don't even really remember when it was. Uh-oh, the Cathar Heresy has appeared in the county of... Okay, well, I don't need to worry too much about uh, about that appearing in the Holy Land. Um, this game fascinated me. I wasn't good at it because I was really little. Um, but, like, just this idea of being able to play Egypt and to move these pieces on the board... Um, and my parents were thrilled because it's a video game that doesn't involve me, like, killing things. And it ostensibly sort of has this educational purpose. And there's only so many times that you can play Civilization until you wonder what a hoplite is. There's only so many times you can hear those, like, quotes from Thomas Edison or Machiavelli or all of these, or Plato, you know, that are in Civilization. And it has the Civilopedia, and it will talk about what these things were in history. And so, again, it's not that I sat down at, like, you know, age 10, and it was like, I know everything about the Byzantine Empire now. Like, but it's little seeds, and they're things that motivate me to go and, you know, do some reading. And it's something that maybe it would take, you know, 10 years before I finally read something about, you know, about those concepts. Uh, even now, right? Like, I mean, it's not that far out from 10 years, to be honest. Um, but, like, you know, you never quite know when these things are going to hit. And so one of the things that I try and do with the chat is that it's kind of like, you know, it's like batting, but you don't get any strikes called at you. You know, you just keep swinging and it misses a bunch of times and then you connect and it just kind of puts this time bomb in somebody's head that when they play the game or maybe they play another one, this idea finally takes root. And it's like, that's what they were talking about. And what it winds up doing, at least for me, when these things happen, it makes the game so much more enjoyable because there's that personal connection, there's that idea I have in my head which has gone straight through into the game 
Um, so again, like when I look at this game, I'm obviously not going to talk to you about every last hour that I spent in political economy classes, but a lot of that is carrying through, um, especially some of those papers about how power is shared in Africa. I think about that a lot when I play Crusader Kings 2. Now, none of that was specifically designed in the game, but there are things that come up. Um, and it's one of the reasons I really enjoy being able to um, to interact with you folks. Oh god, I just read what Eyes of Sin wrote. Uh, I'm glad that I don't have a face cam so I can avoid the blushing. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things that's really rewarding for me is when I hear from you guys what you're interested in or what your you know, what your passions are, or what you're studying, or how you got into this game, or maybe whether or not you're on the fence about this game. You know, even if you wind up working at a coffee shop or something like that, you know, we were talking about how this game is interesting because it gives you interesting wants. You know, why am I trying to kill this guy? Well, really, it's because he wants to kill me. That's about the only reason, you know, it's convenient. <laughs> I might even change that plot right now. Um, but this game does a better job of creating a motivation for a character than a lot of RPGs I've played, because RPGs make motivation this logbook of things, whereas Crusader Kings 2 does this really great job of saying, it's like, I want that, I want that county, and I want that crown, and I want that, you know, I want that hot wife, and I want that bloodline to carry on, and so many things in here, and it's something that's driven entirely by me. So, um... Everybody can relate to that. Everybody knows what it's like to want something. And so um, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy the chats, because I get to find out about your passions and I get to find out about what sort of drives you as a person. And whether that's through the games that you play or whether you start talking about your personal backgrounds. Um, it's one of the reasons why the chatting winds up, uh, winds up helping out a lot with these, uh, these things. Um, Anyways, let me just take a quick second to catch up with chat because I know I wound up uh, I really I wound up monologuing for a bit. Well, here, uh, my young my young apprentice has finished her education in stewardship. You notice with pride that she's attained nothing less than a masterful level of knowledge. Well, she'll make somebody very happy. Uh, we've got the Duke of Austria. Let's go for it. Okay, uh, let me just catch up with chat really quick, because again, I was monologuing a bit. Uh, you have no doubt uh, it's worth the usual price it's announced for, but dollar conversion makes the game too expensive. Oh yeah, no, Domi, I mean, this is the same thing. Like, again, I would, I would love it if I could buy every game at full price to support the developers, but the developers know this. Um, and especially with dollar conversions, it's like, there are lots of things demanding our time and attention, and... You know, I, I honestly think, like, if you buy the game at a sale price, that's fine, because, of course, there's also that period of time you have not played the game and developed it. Like, I am enjoying Battlefield Five from day one because I know I'm getting better at the game, and that is very different from the way that I've played Transistor, which I still haven't really gotten into that far, and that game's quite old now, so. Um, it's honestly, like... We're the consumer, and we're spoiled for choice at this point, so. And Akina says you grew up playing a lot of Age of Empires 2 these days. You prefer turn-based strategy if you play a uh, strategy game. I kind of have this feeling that turn-based strategy is one of the better developed uh, genres in gaming because there's this whole library of tabletop games that game developers could draw from. Uh, and then on top of that, there's also a board gaming renaissance going on, which by and large is not exclusively, but by and large is turn-based. And so in this case, you have the benefit of a lot of interesting ideas from, uh, from, oh my goodness, somebody just dropped my, Grand Admiral Thon, thank you very much for the bits. Um, so uh, I think the, uh, one of the things, um, Sorry, I got totally distracted. I'm just reading some of the other... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Turn-based. So I think one of the things that comes out of this is that, like, even if you think of something like Darkest Dungeon, Darkest Dungeon is, in a way, a turn-based strategy game. It's really not that different from playing, like, Final Fantasy, if you think about it. Um, so 
it's why, like, I like real-time stuff. I actually really like the way Paradox does this as possible real-time uh, strategy because it plays like a turn-based strategy game when it has to, but you don't feel like you're under a constant pressure. Um, so, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like real-time kind of needs to, to up its game. I think Paradox is doing something really interesting with real-time. But I, I definitely feel like, other than Paradox, I'm, I'm struggling to think of people who've really got like a handle on real-time strategy. And I partly think that's because it's sort of been gobbled up by the MOBA. Uh, MOBA is a fine strategy type of game, but it's sort of wound up eating everything. And it seems like the interesting experiments that, that we're trying to learn from MOBAs and bring them back to strategy, like Dawn of War 3, for whatever reason, didn't find their audience. And I think that's a shame, because I really liked Dawn of War 3. But maybe that says... Uh, how do you donate on Twitch? I'm new. Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you, Grand Admiral Thon. It looks like you found how to do that. So um, you don't have to buy bits. There is actually a don't. There's a if you are interested, there's a direct PayPal donation button below. But you can contribute however you would like. Whether that is buying something off of a wish list, whether you use an affiliate link to buy a link, whether you subscribe, whether you put bits in or something like that. Totally up to you, but I 100% uh, appreciate that, Admiral Thrawn. That is very nice of you to do. I thank you kindly. Um, Nikina looks like he's covered you there. Uh, you can buy bets, cheer with them, watch ads to earn some. Uh, there's usually a donation link below. Most uh, Yes, there is, just below. Uh, i never done this, so I might be wrong. Have any of you watched Lupin the Third? No, I don't even know who that is. Uh, next question, can you donate from your iPad? Uh, definitely you can, it look, but it looks like you, you can, so... Uh, MC, your passion is co- Hey, how are you doing, MC? Does cocaine count as a passion? Absolutely it does. Tell me exa everything you know about cocaine, because I've only had one opportunity in my life, and I did not take it for reasons that are probably self-explanatory. Um, some issues with bits on mobile, but the tip jar link might work. It should, um, but I don't get a ton, so I can't say. But I know Johnny... Uh, it worked for Johnny, so I'm happy about that. Uh, Domi, is that why System Chalk doesn't have a cam? Because Isisin would make him blush uh, until he wouldn't be able to stream anymore? Oh, I, I blush all the time, so it's it's easy uh, it's easy for me to get through that. I'm going to do a slow speed just because I'm almost caught up with, uh, with chat. Uh, it's anime about a gentleman thief. Chalk looks like Lupin a bit. Do I want to Google this eyes of sin? Am I going to cry? <laughs> to the great Duke Edamero, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your suggestion uh, that these two kind people get married. The person sending the message being one of them. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, I've seen his economy class video on YouTube. That wasn't an economics lesson. That was a... Um, I believe that was a classics lecture. You mean like real money with where you can give five bucks? Yeah. So the link, uh, li the link to that should be in like the info panel down below. Sorry, guys. I don't want to put to. Okay, I'm gonna put this link up once for everyone, just because I also am not gonna be one of these people who says, "Oh, I don't need money." I, I love it when you spend money on me. Um, for those of you who are not able to see the link. I will put it in chat. I will leave it at that. If you want to donate, you can. But I've put that in there because that is where the discussion is going. Not because I want to be one of those those people. Silvertongue 100. I am sorry that 99 others got to you in front. No, you know what? I already said that with Grand Admiral Thrawn. You are still the most precious Silvertongue to me. How are you doing tonight? I take it you are here for Crusader Kings 2. What is your favorite country to play? If you do play Crusader Kings 2. Um... A group of hedge knights have come to visit Fruli. Markward has met with them and asks for my reply. We'll welcome them with a lavish feast, even though it's over half my treasury. But again, Admiral Thrawn, I, I appreciate the bits, and I appreciate you hanging out. It's very cool to have an active chat with lots of people who are interested in the game and are fun to hang out. So you've you've done you've done plenty. If you want that link, that is the link that's down below. But again, um, everybody has sort of their levels at which they want to contribute and things like that. So, 
You really dig Norse starts, but Africa has been really fun this expansion. You mean um, Holy Fury? I've not actually played Holy Fury. We're on the previous patch, so... Um, but if you have, I, I'm also part, I ask one because I'm interested in what people, um, I'm interested in what people play, but it also gives me recommendations in terms of what I should try next. So, uh, the Hedge Knights have participated in a minor tournament together with our Knights in Pavia. Sadly, one of those landless vagabonds has been severely injured. Well, let's empty out the rest of the treasury just so we can get our five piety. Or we can allow them to stay in the castle while he recovers. I think I've already got the just, don't I? Yeah. Um, it's not a great conversion rate, but there you have it. All right, uh, let's get you to... Do oh, I'm loading them all up on duty, but this guy really needs the extra stewardship, so... What else do we have? MC's been playing Red Dead Redemption 2 lately. It's a fun game, and cocaine-based medicines are in the game, so it's an Old West theme. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was one negative side effect of the movie. I didn't know too many people with substance abuse problems, but I definitely had a few people who were like, we we're all kind of like at the beginning of our careers in that, and so I think there's a tendency for people to try and like play the role. And so I know there are a lot of people who wound up... I mean, again, obviously what your own stances are in terms of what you what you experience is, is your own, own business, but uh, I kind of felt that people were just... I don't know. There's something about just this pretense of like, we work in movies, so we need to do cocaine. It's like, okay, sure. If you're like the head of a studio, if you're a producer, go nuts. But like, I'm a camera guy. Like, I I will buy the beer for the truck. I will load the mags and the rest of these, you know, the rest of these guys can just, you know, get, they, they can have their fun. I've got work to do. Um, but I think that's also why I wasn't invited to the interesting parties. <laughs> so I am hopelessly square, uh, but I don't think that's the worst trait of me. All right, more raiders. So let's deal with these rapscallions. As always, we're combining up before. We don't lose too much uh, by preparing. Um, what else do we have here? Kicking the Umayyads and the Abbasids out of As Africa is your goal in your current campaign. You switch to feudal, takes time to rebuild after the switch. You know, I've never, I've only done one, like, big conversion, and that was, like, when I was learning in Italy. Uh, not Italy, in, um, in Ireland. But I also think, like, an Ireland start is probably one of the least original uh, Crusader King stories that people hear. So, uh, I don't really have a lot to say about, uh about that. Um, one of the things I do want to try uh, is no uh, a nomad start because I've had horse lords forever but I have yet to uh, I have yet to really take advantage of it so you know quite a few high functioning borderline alcoholics but that's art for you. <laughs> so again raise my levies in Treviso uh, basically just to supplement this group here. I don't really need to do it, but I figure it doesn't hurt to have even more people. I mean, there's a there's actually a formula behind this, Lancaster's Laws, uh, in terms of how uh, numerical superiority results in fewer casualties as well as more damage dealt to, to enemies. It, but it's like one of these ones where you like you look at you look at how it's set up, and usually people look at stuff like that, and they're like, well, that's obvious. I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't hurt to have a model of these things for those times that maybe it isn't so obvious, so. Um, what do we have? Horse Lords puts the new Warrior Lodges is... Oh, plus the new Warrior Lodge is great. Holy Fury is something you can't recommend enough. That's very cool, Silver Tongue. Yeah, I, um... I was a little bit on the fence on it. I did communicate uh, interest to Paradox in terms of covering it, but my view on this is always that, like, I never expect a press key to things. Uh, I didn't really hear back, so I don't know if that's just, you know, don't call us, we'll call you, or, um, you know, they changed their strategy or whatever. I, you know, I'm not quite sure what went on with that. Um, and that's fine, because if I know that I'm going to be... Like, if I know I'm going to be playing something privately more than streaming it, I usually buy it on my on my own. But it was a particular dilemma this time around because we had this fairly interesting Lombardy campaign going on. And so it's like, okay, well, do I, like, end the stream partway through and, like, reset for Holy Fury? Or do I carry the story on to its end 
and, um, you know, move, you know, you know, play Holy Fury later. So I kind of figure it's like, well, you know, if I get a press key, clearly I'm not going to play the old patch. That's dumb. Um, the catalyst was going to be, though, that if it was an opportunity to cover it as part of a promotion strategy or whatever, I would do that. Uh, and if I didn't have that, in, you know, sort of incentive to do so, I was going to continue on in the old patch. Because I've only actually gotten to the very end of the game uh, a couple of times. So I figured it'd be kind of nice to get to the end. And then, you know, I might do Stellaris and then head back to Holy Fury or something like that. But it's one of these cases where... As much as I'm personally interested in playing Holy Fury, it just happened to be at a time where I already had a game underway, and so it's uh, it's a case of me playing the old patch, which I know is super boring for some people. So, what's the story of this campaign? Well, uh, last month, uh, so we started off as the uh, Count as uh, the Count of uh, Verona. Um, we've actually been doing fairly well in terms of kind of blobbing out into uh, into our second duchy and, and slowly getting designs on the crown. And we're this close to taking the kingdom of Lombardy, and then everything fell apart, and then Lombardy fell apart, and then raiders came, and they burned my magnum opus, which I'm sure somebody can share the clip of my reaction to that. Um, and uh, now we're sort of in the... We're sort of rebuilding. <laughs> Um, but it's been fun, uh, mostly because it's been a really long time since I've played a continental game and I'm really enjoying it because I don't immediately steamroll everything and it's kind of fun to, to get kicked around a little bit and then come back even stronger. So it's, uh, it's fun. I, I, I like it quite a bit. Um, I could strive to become better or I can be satisfied with who I am and what I have. Oh, we'll become ambitious. I don't know. Does anybody have any other tidbits? We usually, rec I I usually leave the story to the the reading of the chronicle at the end anyway. But um, I don't know. I think one of the things I've enjoyed the most is we had this. We went from like a the the worst, biggest, baddest Satanist ever, and I completely forgot that there is a, the new rule now where if you are a complete bastard you like that is visited on your children um so i had to work through that uh and then we had this like incredibly like basically something straight out of the republic uh as far as this like hermetic um ruler who was great and then i think i took like one bad step and he wound up in the oubliette and uh it was bad <laughs> um so yeah, it's just been, um, it's been one of those nice, it's kind of this little sine wave pattern of ups and downs, whereas like, you know, normally if I start somewhere in, in England, it's just sort of like, yep, we, we kick these guys' asses, and then we kick these guys' asses, and then, you know, we wound up with half of Europe, and then, and then it was over, so... Did you did you say something about giving the scullery maid a roll around? I don't know what you're talking about. I usually only go countess or higher. The eyes of skin, uh, the eyes of sin. On an unrelated note, what exactly is the scullery maid, and how does one become become one? Hey, no problem, Grand Admiral Thrawn. You you missed me kind of babbling a little bit about the game in between. I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit. Um. The scullery maid could be a creature in Skalta's simulator. <laughs> Her dedication to religious pursuits has been noticed around the realm. Among others, it has quite impressed Bishop Theodlap of uh, Fiume. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing these uh, these names. Uh, you may have ma uh, you've maintained a correspondence on various religious and philosophical matters for some time, and find that you are rapidly becoming good friends. Our common interests bind us together. Um, I feel like I should send my chaplain to deal with the Lombard heresy, but I also feel like that's not my problem, and I can get more from hunting, hunting the bad guys. Uh, to answer, uh, so this is the official Wikipedia definition. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you very much for the two bits again, uh, Grand Admiral Thon, for a total of four bits. Uh, Eyes of Sin. Uh, in great houses, scullery maids were the lowest rank and often the youngest of the female domestic servants, and asked, acted as a assistant to the kitchen maid. And believe me, this house, the house of Adamini, is a great house. Domi tried watching a stream on your because the font is not big enough for your cell phone to read and it kept crashing too. Ugh, sorry to hear about that, guys. So like a waitress? Almost. Um, you know what? I bet Johnny has met a few scullery maids in his time. I'm almost certain of it. You can just give me a quick second here, guys. I actually want to see if Twitch has given me transcodes or if they just hate me. Nope, they just hate me. Sorry. No, no problem at all, Domi. And I mean, I'll, I'll admit, 720 is a little bit low for most uh, is a little bit low for most um, uh, streams. The catch is, is that I think even at this current bit rate, I know there are some people who aren't able to watch it when we don't have transcodes, and. Um, I also know that, at least if YouTube's any indication, a majority of people actually watch the stream, like, tabbed out into another window. Um, one of the things that you can sort of notice with that, by the way, is when, like, I get very animated in terms of talking, you notice that the viewer account suddenly jumps up a little bit. I actually sometimes think that's people clicking into the window, and so Twitch is recognizing them as active viewers again. But definitely the YouTube metrics indicate that most people tend to watch it sort of as background noise. And I'm totally fine with that because a viewer is a viewer. So, I have received a letter from a fellow member of the Benedictine Order. Loop, dear brother Adamero, will you, as the Christian scholar you are, please offer me some advice on my poetry or the attempt of it? Reading through the attached documents, there are multiple verses all in honor of God. And he's blind. He's Charles... Charles, what the hell am I saying? John Milton, but an early John Milton, and not Protestant. Um, so, hmm, I'm missing more uh, the more comforting aspects of faith. While I enjoy the metaphors, they seem a little forced, or writing is frivolous. Hmm, I am missing the more comforting aspects of faith. You're ne nearly 27, you're too old to be a scullery maid. I agree. You need to be countess or higher. After all, it's my preference. Um, can't confirm background noise. See, I like it when people come. Actually, my favorite is whenever I refer to, to the background groups, there's like usually three or four, like, okay, not usually, but every once in a while when I say that, there'll be three or four names that have never once written anything in chat and they say, you're right. And then they go back to total silence again. So if you're one of those people, hello. <laughs> I was beginning to think that Loop took offense to my comments, but today I received a new draft of his work. I am surprised to find that his works really speak to me. Scribbled in the margin, I can just make out, I implore you, brother, bear with me. It is not finished. So I can say, nonsense, this is a brilliant work and the world needs to see it. And I lose 55 gold. Um, it will give me plus one diplomacy for 10 years, or I think the Benedictine Order will treasure these words. You intend to make sure that the writings will go to the Benedictine Order for safekeeping, and I become a preserver of poetry, which will give me monthly piety. I think we'll go for the monthly piety. Only barely, though, you're 19. You've been wondering if you're the youngest person here. Uh, it's a really tough call, Domi. I used to think I had a bit of an older audience, and then a few people started sharing uh, ages. And um, it's weird. It's almost kind of like this, like, multiple... <laughs> Grand Admiral Thrawn uh, doing the lily pad thing, where you guys know this thing, right? Of, like, the lily pad that doubles in size each you know, and how long it takes to cover the, uh, now adding four bits for a grand total of eight bits. Thank you again, Grand Admiral Thrawn. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I was a little surprised. I, I always kind of thought I attracted a little bit of an older audience. And this is mostly because like, I don't know, not a lot of people like having somebody just monologue forever on arcane subjects while playing 
games like Crusader Kings. I mean, obviously I play like Wolfenstein and stuff like that too. Um, but it's a little surprised to find out that apparently I'm like, I'm, I'm down with the Ute of today, so. Um, but yeah, I, I actually don't know who my youngest viewer is, uh, Domi, so congratulations! Um, but consider that an asset, because, I don't know, I loved being in university, and I like the fact that you're very passionate about your studies, so that, um, I found it. I mean, I'm also not that far out of school, but I, you know, I worked in movies for a little while, so I was older when I went to school. Um, as I woke up this morning, my hands and feet were bleeding, and there's a sharp pain in my side. What is happening to me? It is the stigmata! I am blessed by God. Also, to give you an idea of how much I don't know about my audience, I used to think I had a predominantly masculine audience, uh, and that is not true. Analytics are like 50-50 on it, and I don't really believe them, um, but at least in terms of chat participants, it's like, seems to be split down the middle, um, which is nice, because I kind of like it when there's a little bit more uh, more diverse. I, it's just one of these things about different perspectives in chat. Um, I learn a lot more when there's a bunch of people who are not me in the chat, so. I want to go on a pilgrimage. I'm flattered to think that you be the Benedictine Order would benefit from my work, Luke writes in his letter. Thank you for your support, brother, he continues, before assuring me of finish the finishing touches he intends to see before the final version of the manuscript will enter the library. I am honored to be surrounded by minds like Lou. And now we go on a pilgrimage. I shall go on a pilgrimage to seek God's grace at one of the holy places of Christianity. I will start making travel plans. Oh, Grand Admiral Thrawn is competing for the youngest here. Fair enough. Uh, and we have uh, Bite of Cat 41 female here. That's cool. Um, I know, I think Kilgore Trout is probably the oldest of the viewers. Um, but this is, see, this is the one thing that I really, um, I try to divest myself from on this, uh, on streaming. Because, you know, what am I going to assume? Well, I'm going to assume the person that I'm talking to in chat is basically me in text. Uh, which makes me assume that, you know, when I see a name, Bite of Cat... It doesn't necessarily have any particular, like I can't assign a gender to that. And so I'm immediately going to say, it's like, oh yeah, I bite of cat, that guy. And like, I kind of assume, like I, I sort of assume that everybody is not just waiting for a reason to be offended and will immediately like rend their garments and declare, um, you know, an oath of enmity on me or something like that but on the other hand it's a really stupid assumption for me that gaming looks like me gaming tends to play a lot more mobile games than i do they definitely play more console games than i do um and they are older younger and the same age as me um in fact i would suggest that most gamers are quite unlike me um and that i could stand to learn a lot from them uh, and so it's one of these cases where it's actually sort of nice to be confronted on a regular basis with, Hey, dummy, nobody in chat is who you think they are. So maybe you could stop talking and listen a little bit more. Um, but then I suppose my job is to kind of talk a bit more, so I don't get too, I don't get too uh, bent out of shape over that. Silvertongue's college age, okay. Um, oh, that's right, Captain Shield. You're, you said what your age was too. I... If you're in 8th grade, I'm younger than... Uh, there are a number of different holy places that you could visit on your pilgrimage. All of them are considered most sacred by the Holy Church, but somewhat, uh, somewhat closer destination might mean a safer journey. Uh, let's go to Rome. Jerusalem and Rome are two of the oldest and holiest places in the Catholic Church. I will go to Rome and see the tombs of the Apostles. Twenty-one male. Oh man, we're doing. This is like a census going on here. Give me a second, guys. I need to write this all down. 
My things are packed, everything is in order. Soon I will walk the streets of the Eternal City and see its marvels. Dear husband, peace be with you. I have been appointed as your regent. Oh wow, you got started early in grad school. Do you mind if I ask what you're, uh, what you're studying as CSF? Lay awake at night reflecting on your pilgrimage. It's an inner journey as well as a physical one, but you can't be sure what destination it will take you to. And do you even have uh, that certainty? We say the mind wanders where it will. So 20% chance we become a poet, 20% chance we become zealous, 10% chance we become depressed, 50% chance of no effect, or 20% chance of it's all right there on the map. Time to get some sleep. Now nah, we'll got poetry in them. It's like McCabe and Mrs. Miller. The mind wanders where it will. And we rolled nothing. Or possibly zealous. Electrical engineering. Masters. Very cool. Uh, do you like... Okay, I gotta ask this. And this is probably a question that you hear on Twitch a lot, but I, I have to ask. Uh, what do you think of the Zactronics games? But you're a history major at heart. You know, actually, uh, Soren Johnson has that background. I think he had a uh, history major, and then he did his master's in uh, computer science. And I mean, he uh, is a programmer, AI programmer on uh, Civ 3, designer on Civ 4, uh, did a bit of Spore and Offworld Trading Company. Or, well, he designed Offworld Trading Company. Uh, Mohawk Games is his game, his, uh, his company. To the thrifty wit Adamero, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your suggestion that Gundold and Emil G Wow, Emgel em em Berna get married. Someone from STEM here thought everybody was inclined to the humanities. I mean, I did TA computer science, but my major has always been econ, so... I, I am a number puncher. I, I punch the numbers, and I, I have pretensions to scientific rigor. Um, Rome, you have finally arrived at Rome. As you enter the Eternal City, you are struck by how the many ancient buildings and monuments that you pass by. It is truly impressive, and you try to imagine how the po apostles felt when they came here on their holy mission at a time when the city's power was at its peak. The large areas seem to be depopulated. The city still boasts an impressive population concentrated around the Tiber River. The holy sites you want to visit are primarily the basilicas of St. Peter and St. Paul, as well as the other early churches and places connected to the martyrs. You start making your way to the center of the city, hoping that you won't get lost in the traffic as the crowds start to get more dense. This is the other thing too, like just because it's a major doesn't mean that you can't enjoy uh, other things too. Like if I, I remember too, like my, uh, my uh, thesis advisor, Francesco, was really clear. Like I, I came to him with an idea that wasn't that great, but it was something that I was encouraged to do by the, um, you know, by the, the person who was organizing the, the class that I needed to do it for. And he told me, it's like, you know, go, go off on holidays and like read anything but economics and then come back and we'll talk about your idea. So, have a great one, K5. Thanks for stopping by. And again, for those of you guys who like a more conversational type of stream, definitely feel free to check out K5's channel. He, uh, he runs a tight ship. Maybe not a tight ship, but he runs a friendly ship. The good ship Lollipop, you might say. Since we're hosting the census, where are you all from? I am from Canada. You've never actually mentioned your... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, maybe I was wrong then, Captain Shield, so... Uh, the saints, this holy ground, how it all moves my soul. I realize now that all my life up to this point has only been a preparation for this journey. How wondrous that the light of the Lord truly shines in me, a poor sinner. From now on, I shall always do his work. Praise the Blessed Virgin. All right, looks like I need a new marshal. Well, he knows what he's doing. I've got a new son. Also, I believe the peace treaty is over, so let's plot county in the held capital duchy fair enough 
I'll need to come up with more underhanded means of taking it away. 16, Captain Shield. Illinois, USA. Uh, Domi's from Brazil. Oh my goodness. Uh, we actually have another... Uh, I'm pretty sure we have another viewer from Brazil. Uh, you finally returned from your pilgrimage. It was rewarding and an interesting journey, and you'd do it all again if you could. Still, it's good to be back home. A great experience. Seu Paulo. The regency of Duke Ademero of Fruli has ended. Duchess. Hey, Belgium! How you doing, Shaman Zombie? I used to have a pretty healthy European audience when I was in Vancouver because my hours were a bit weird, and so I would normally... Uh, I would normally wind up streaming at times that were better for... Uh, that were better for Europe. Never forget the Congo? Are you from the Congo, Silver Tongue? That's amazing if you are. Uh, Brazilians, Koreans, Russians compete for who's the most ubiquitous nationality on the internet. The funny thing about that, Domi, too, I have uh, a good Russian friend, a good Korean friend, and uh, one good Brazilian friend. <laughs> so uh, it's 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 actually a factor of my life, not just uh, not just the internet, but all have been uh, extremely pleasant to chat. Although I will say the Russian friend, um, because you asked me about my French, my Russian friend always insists that French sounds like a pigeon language. Pura, pura, pura. I don't hear it myself, but. Mostly play Hearts of Iron 4, came here for wrong variety. That's cool, Shaman Zombie. I, I like Hearts of Iron 4, but I'm pretty garbage at it. Um, I think I still need to get my head wrapped around the sort of the, the... See, the thing is, it's the most like a war game, and I'm really bad at the actual sort of the war part. So, you know, that's kind of a problem, but it's a fantastic game. Um, I suspect you might have heard of this place from... Uh, from Alex the Rambler. Also, of course, um, uh, one of the things that's great about Belgium is uh, if you have the Sabaton soundtrack, then you get to hear Resistant Bite whenever Belgium comes on. And that is a great song, so. Wait a minute, eight years and five months. Sorry, I, I must be missing some. Oh, <laughs> from the, uh, from the, <laughs> the, uh, the typing one. A uh, man claiming to be a lord who disappeared seven years ago has found his way to my castle. He sings of the fair queen Elfland, and some say his songs are prophetic. Long lost but home again, I can gain the trait kind, which does hurt my intrigue, which is already low to begin with. Uh, does improve my diplomacy, though. He's finally found his way home, or I'd love to hear him sing. And I gain... Oh! This is a tough call. Uh, I think I will go for... Well, it's only until August, though. I think I'll take the hit to Intrigue. I'm pleased to hear that after a period of peace and shrewd management, the county of Mantua is doing very well. People are happy, and the tax collectors are reporting record intakes. I just... One of the things that I'm doing here is, even though I do occasionally, like, go to war, um, I do like this idea of... Wait, we're at war? Huh. Fancy that. Um, I do sort of like the idea because of just the way... I mean, first of all, this guy looks really nice. Uh, and yes, I've got a big army and I know how to use it. Um, but just the way it's sort of turned out, this guy... I just don't like the idea of him being mean to people. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I don't think that's what people normally mean when they say pigeon language. I don't know, she just made this... Uh, maybe I've, I've misunderstood what uh, 
what she meant then. A pidgin language is a language used in trade between country. Oh, that's... Oh, okay, fair enough. Because, I mean, she did make, like, a pura 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 sound. Um, I've never heard it used that way. Thank you for the clarification, Silvertongue. That's probably exactly what she meant. Um, but now I really want to know what the pura 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 was about. <laughs> um... Shaman Zombie is so bad at her Hearts of Iron 4, you paratrooper the enemy, and if that fails, you die. So basically, it's Operation Market Garden all over again. Um, my marshal tells me that one of my commanders, Fulcrod, has improved significantly. Excellent. Wait, are you and Alex at the same level of competency in HOI, or are you better? That is an excellent question, Grand Admiral Thrawn. We have never put it to the test. Um... Despite myself, I will have occasional moments of, like, strokes of genius. Ooh, the army of the beast. Um, but, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the big challenges I run into of Hearts of Iron 4, like, this is one of the things I like about Crusader Kings 2, is that I will plant these seeds, and, like, if you watch the VODs for this, like, you will definitely hear in, like, one episode I'll say, I'm doing this because I want X to happen. And then a couple of generations later, X happens, and I'm in a position to take advantage of it. One of the problems I have with Hearts of Iron 4 is that I can't quite get my production capacity to equal my ability to sort of train troops. I'm, I'm a little garbage at that still. And so the problem is, is like when I play Germany, the Anschluss happens too late because I just don't have enough troops in the field. And that's because I've either generated, I haven't generated enough guns or possibly I have generated enough guns, but I'm not training enough troops. And I've just, it's less that I'm not so, like I kind of feel that if you're running into problems in the actual war part, it's because you didn't prepare well enough at the beginning. I am really, not one of these people who thinks that you can... I know it's really fun to think that you can just pull off this master stroke of tactical brilliance in the last minute, but I honestly feel that pretty much any strategy game I play has been won or lost based on decisions that I've made hours before the actual fight happens. And if Melemony's still here, she can tell you exactly how that happened in Stellaris. <laughs> Uh, the trade route from Padua is in dire need of a new ship and equipment to be able to continue bringing in goods to the realm. Well, you know, who who wants money anyway, right? Just look it up. It's spelled pigeon. Uh, maybe you were making her pura pura pura? I mean, she's the one... For those of you who saw those black and white photos, that's the same girl. I, it's, I could do worse. <laughs> Isosin has played How to Fool Boyfriend. Uh, that's the one actually she's been insisting that I play, and I really should get onto. I'm going to go up to level two while I'm enjoying these chats. Hey, Melemony, great to see you. So yeah, you you know that uh, strategy games are usually a slow burn for me, although I do still apologize about the protectorate status. That's why French is the language of love. Uh, you're 17 system shock, so it's very close. It's always better to underestimate anyway. It's like, you know, oh, you don't look a day over 80 is never something that somebody wants to hear. And uh, Crusader Kings, the uh, can you only play in Europe or anywhere? You have never played or watched it. Oh, here is how far you can go. So unfortunately, Shaman Zombie, it's uh, not the same as Europa Universalis 4 or Hearts of Iron 4. It doesn't have the big world. And the reason for that is if you think about Hearts of Iron 4, it's about a global conflict. Individuals don't matter so much. If there is an individual that matters, it's either a cabinet minister, a general, or... Um, I'm actually just trying to think, is there any other individual that really matters? maybe an ace if you really want to come up with that third category. Um, otherwise, basically people exist to have a gun put in their hands and told to go fight. Uh, Europa Universalis 4, you sort of have a ruler, but basically they have like three stats and, you know, like this, this is a massive improvement over Europa Universalis 4. Uh, Crusader Kings, like, in terms of people who I am directly responsible for, there are 15 people below me. 
Um, in terms of the person, my ruler, the person who I refer, you know, kick up to, 27 people. And of course, if I'm responsible for 15, and then the person just below him, Lambert, uh, is responsible for seven, every single one of these people is modeled in the game. They all have their own choices. To give you an idea of how absurd Crusader Kings can get, there was a not really a bug, but a performance optimization that they implemented with the Byzantine Empire. The problem that they had was that if the Byzantine Empire grew very large in the late game, what would happen is all of the lords would constantly be evaluating whether or not they could chop the testicles off of other people in the area, and it was really dragging down the performance. It was using up a ridiculous amount of processing power. And so uh, they put in an optimization to sort of reduce the number of times that they would be evaluating that sort of thing. So they've been very clear, like they did Jade, uh, Jade Empire. Is it Jade Empire or Jade and Dragon? I'm pretty sure it's Jade Empire. Um, well, you know what? I can find out exactly what it is. Uh, do wiki. Jade Dragon. I am horrible. Um, so Jade Dragon, basically China appears off screen. Right here, we've got the Tang Empire. Now, it has an enormous influence over, uh, over the world. Um, but, oh cool, the Emperor likes Italian cultures and dislikes African cultures. Um, but basically they've been pretty clear that the map will not be growing uh, because there just simply is not any more room. So you're not exactly limited to Europe. Uh, you obviously have the Middle East, you have Africa, uh, you have um, parts of the East, and obviously you've got Scandinavia to kick. Well, I mean, Scandinavia is Europe, but like you, you definitely have more than just Europe that you play in. Um, but it is probably the most constrained of the Paradox maps. And the reason for that is because this game is about the individual relationships between people. And so you've got this world of, well, part of a world of uh, these individual people all with their wants and their ambitions. And it's, uh, it's creating these situations where they need to, um, uh, they sort of need to cut back a little bit. But that doesn't, the game is not less uh, it is not a lesser game as a result of it. It's just a particular decision that had to be made based on the way that they, they made the game when they started. So, how far in years can you go to the Cru uh, Crusader Kings? I believe you can go up to the fall of Constantinople. Let me just double check that. Uh, last year in Crusader Kings 2. Uh, 1453. Uh, obviously, there are mods that you can get to keep playing, but honestly, 1453 is fun. And if you want to keep going, there's actually uh, you can you can buy a DLC that will export the game to Hearts of Iron 4. So, and I mean, you can begin the game in 769, so that's about 700 years of history to cover. That's a pretty it's a pretty healthy period of time. I mean, uh, Hearts of Iron 4 is telescoped down to basically a, a decade. Your dedication to religious pursuits has been noticed around the realm. Among others, you've quite impressed Bishop. Unpert of San Martino, you have maintained a correspondence on various religious and philosophical matters for some time, and find that you are rapidly becoming good friends. Okay, so we'll get out of debt in a little while. What about March of? Oh, that's a good question, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, I that was before my time, so you you may be right uh, in that. If so nice, it means you don't have to fight a duel to the... Wait, what's going on here? Oh my goodness, sorry. There's some chat that I've, I I missed here. So uh, apparently there is a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm for me playing a visual novel. Uh, you do not need to bribe me to do a visual novel. I just really need to find the the opportunity. And yeah, Eyes of Sin, you are, you are not an old lady. Um... You guys are very fun to have in chat. 
I do need to just caution you, I'll probably be wrapping up uh, reasonably soon. I normally like to go to the end of the life, but this guy's actually got a pretty good thing going for him. Um, so I know it's been a little bit more of a relaxing one, but it is maybe worth, uh, while we're uh, winding down, it's actually not a terrible time to reflect a bit on uh, what we set out to do. So we set out to uh, gain some financial stability. Now, in this particular case, I, um, you know, it doesn't seem like it because I've been in debt a lot. But of course, I don't owe money to the money lenders anymore. Uh, and we also added Istra to my, um, or Istria, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Uh, to my holdings, uh, and the reason why we've been in debt are because of my uh, my trading routes. And you know, obviously, I can choose to sort of abandon them, but I don't really want to do that. Um, we uh, so again, we've consolidated our financial position. We've also consolidated territorially a bit. I may wind up losing this. The alliance and non-aggression pact between Grifo Carling and Lando Anschling has been dissolved as they no longer have any marriage ties. Doesn't really concern me right now. I woke up this morning, my hands and feet were bleeding, and there's a sharp pain in my side. It's stigmata again. Ten piety. Um, God's blessing upon thee, Commissus Adamero. The hectic life of a ruler rarely allows for sufficient time of contemplation. I ask you to seclude yourself and to think about your life and your actions, a sort of penance for your sins. I will accept, because we're just going to be building up uh, the money anyway. So, I think that's under intrigues. Do penance. Today my seclusion begins. I have selected a simple chamber in the castle where I will spend most of my time during the coming months. Within those bare walls I shall do my prayers, read the Bible, and contemplate my life and actions. Um, sorry, there was a, a couple points about CK2. So Bite of Cat says, you feel like CK2 is a choose-your-own-adventure book. Uh, those were big when you were a kid. I mean, I remember, um, so I, uh, when I was growing up, I was in a small community called Grand Forks, which had this uh, library, which, like, it was really mixed. They would have these absolutely bizarre, like, programming books, which were oriented towards kids, but they were, like, from the 1970s. And there's, like, a ton of choose-your-own-adventure books. And, like, I remember this I don't even know where it came from, but they had like this entire series of a science fiction called The Space Police, which I've never heard from or since. Um, but then they wouldn't have like the sort of things you'd normally expect to have in a library. So I actually wound up reading a lot of Choose Your Own Adventure books uh, in that. And you're absolutely right. I mean, so much of the action of this game is told through these little options here. Uh, and it's particularly interesting because of course, a Choose Your Own Adv Adventure book, you are stuck with a fixed number of pages, whereas this one can put some dependencies in terms of your personality traits and such. Um, but you're absolutely right. Like the things that make choose your own adventure books interesting are uh, are exactly what make some of the interactions of Crusader Kings interesting. And the nice thing is just because the computer's allowed to do so much of the heavy lifting, there's just this entire simulation going on in the background that's taking care of all of the boring, um, you know, all of the boring bits in terms of just like, you know, keeping records of the numbers and such and making sure that you don't cheat. So, Shaman Zombie, you need to eat. Thank you very much uh, for stopping by. I hope we get a chance to see you again, but no hard feelings if not. Enjoy your breakfast, sir. Um, are Choose Your Own Adventure Book... I don't know, let's, let's get the youngins in chat to chime in. Are, are Choose Your Own Adventure Books still a done thing? I cannot make sense of this passage of the Bible. The words are archaic and their meaning is deeply hidden by copious layers of symbolism. I would greatly benefit from my, uh, my spender, it would greatly benefit my spiritual development if I discovered the text's essence on my own. Although at this point, perhaps I would be better asking my court chaplain. I will figure this out on my own. 35% chance that I interpret it successfully, a testament to my great understanding of the Bible, or 65% chance that I fail to make sense of the passage. Uh, you got them when you were a kid from the library. Yes, they are, just not the most common. Well, I kind of feel like they're, like... So... When I want to be really depressed about stuff, not even depressed, but if I want to be pessimistic about stuff, I can say it's like, oh, with Twitter and Facebook and, and video games, like, people don't read nowadays. And that's probably true in a sense. Um, I also think that people are reading tweets and Facebook messages and that 
there's nothing so like how can i recommend the weather factory and lottie and, and alexis and eyes of sin like how can i recommend all of these twitter accounts to you and then say oh it sucks that everybody's reading twitter um or you know you have like wikipedia available to you or you know the encyclopedia britannica if you want something that's a uh, you know a little bit more um locked in um but the big thing is is that there's also a chance for people to specialize. So like The Martian is something that was self-published originally. Um, you know, books are able to play to their strengths now as opposed to try and be sort of this more mass thing. Like basically, competition is not always a bad thing. And books today have their own distinct characteristics. The same way that movies... So, you know, if you compare a movie from like the 1920s to today, there's an entire grammar that we have developed through being exposed to motion pictures that like, I think an old audience would not be able to understand movies today. And of course we sort of feel that older movies are a little boring because they spend a lot of time communicating the ideas. And that's because, you know, they didn't really have 30 or 10 second commercials that are trying to, to make the point. Now, again, it's really easy. I mean, I've worked in movies, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, movies stopped being good as soon as I stopped working in the industry. Um, and I definitely have a taste for older movies, but that's also because there's a bit of a selection bias there, right? I don't get to see all the crap that came out in like the 1980s or the 1970s or whatever. Um, I guess there's like the crap from the 1980s if you look for it, but you know. Um, so, you know, in this sense, you know, a trip to the library can be really exciting. Like, again, there's great book. I'm reading a great book on the Marshall Plan right now, um, and it's a modern book. Um, so I really just think in some cases here, it's just a matter of, you know, you know, I, here's here's kind of how I think this, uh, this path works. You play a game like Crusader Kings 2, and, you know, you play Crusader Kings 2, and it's like, I wonder who King Carl was, because, you know, they have a... You know, you've got Charlemagne, the, the DLC that's available for CK2, and maybe also like playing uh, Total War. And you know there's an expansion for Total War called The Age of Charlemagne. So who is this guy? And maybe you follow the Wikipedia link and you're like, oh God, this guy like was an enormous badass. <laughs> so maybe you pick up a book or maybe you're like, you know what? The Middle Ages is kind of not my thing. It doesn't seem like there's a lot going on for the average person. They just kind of seem to be like trying to make enough food to, to stay alive and then they just kind of fall dead at some point. But maybe you, you know, I'm Canadian, so I love the story of Montcalm and Wolf. Um, you know, there's going to be something that interests you because a lot of these games are about history. Not all of them. Some of them are about science fiction, but it's not that science fiction isn't about ideas. Um... There's something that gets you interested, and I think that's a great thing about games, um, because games can show you things in a certain way. Like, you can't tell me that somebody has not played Assassin's Creed and then gone and found out more about Renaissance Italy or about the Golden Age of Piracy or the American Revolution. I mean, obviously, an American audience is probably going to know the American Revolution very well. But, like, you... Like, you, if you're curious about something, you can't help yourself. And so, really, we're, we're, we've never been in a better position for books to be cool and covering topics that people are interested to. So, um, I do make it a little bit of a guest domi. I, I, it's not a huge secret, but it is actually kind of fun. Uh, I, 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 I've learned that... I've, I've heard enough people who really should not be self-conscious about their age being like, Oh, he, it's impolite to ask. And I'm like, okay, so you just sounded massively insecure about your age. <laughs> um, it's a number, uh, but it is a little fun. It's a little fun to keep. It's a little bit like the face thing, right? Like, I'm not that hard to find on the internet, but it's fun to have a little mystery. Trivia, you share a name with a guy that settled Quebec. Oh. Um, is this Samuel de Champlain? In my obstinacy, I refuse to ask for help. Surely I, the Duke, would have known enough of the Bible to understand the meaning of the passage. 
Hour upon hour I sat staring at the words, trying to make sense of them, but each interpretation I could think of felt lackluster and hollow. The wisdom of God is beyond my understanding. Or maybe it was Jacques Cartier. No, Samuel de Chaplin, yeah. Billy Green 88, thank you very much for the follow. Grand Admiral loves books more so than video games, especially the old Star Wars books. Well, I mean, with a name like that, how could you, you know, how could you not? I actually found out about the character of Thrawn from, uh, was he in TIE Fighter? Or maybe it was Star Wars Rebellion. Um, and yeah, attention span is a problem. I actually run it. So the biggest problem I run into is I still like reading a lot of my old econometrics textbooks because there's a lot that I can still learn. Your vassal Countess Guntrude has expressed her dissatisfaction with your choice of advisors. She claims that she is more qualified than a majority of your council and that she would make an excellent chancellor. Uh, she would be a controversial choice, however. So what does my current chancellor... <laughs> no. How dare you suggest something so inappropriate? Um, but yeah, so I tend to notice it's very easy. That's really one that I do want to focus some attention on. Uh, but I clearly have, uh, and part of this is just work because like work does not pay me to just sit down and read my econometrics textbooks. They kind of expect me to have like already done that at school. Um, but, uh, especially when I'm home, you know, if you have games or there's like a fiction book or some music to listen to or even if you're in like a coffee shop or something like that there's other sources of distractions um but i think it's something it's like any other skill like you know i remember i usually my exercise is like i work on the 18th floor so i like walk up the stairs every day and like you know it just generally is like i find ways of making myself move i don't like there aren't really any gyms close to me so like i don't go and pump iron um but um, I can remember there was a time where I made some like focused effort to like, you know, just like filled up some milk jugs with like water or something like that, or like just generally found something. And I noticed like when I tried to do it on a regular basis, it was like I would really feel very sore and like it was very unpleasant and I didn't want to keep doing it. Um, but as with anything, the more you sort of train and if you pace yourself and just generally if you get into the habit, like if you set yourself the standard of like, I am going to lock myself in my room and I'm going to read for six hours straight and I'm going to love it, goddammit, uh, you are only setting yourself up for failure because I guarantee you 15 minutes into it, you're going to be like, oh, it must have been an hour now. I'm just going to give myself another five minutes and then I can check the watch. And then you look and it's actually 10 minutes. <laughs> Um, time actually went backwards by five minutes because you checked early. Um, but if you just say, it's like, you know what, I am going to, you don't even have like a page count limit. It's like, I am going to learn, especially if it's a textbook, but sometimes textbooks are a little, you know, that's a me thing. Um, but yeah, I sit down, it's like, I want to know this concept by the end of it. No time limit, no page count. I wanted to make sure that I can answer the questions I have about this thing or you know the Marshall Plan book it's like you know I read it, it's like oh my god I didn't know that and then I keep reading a little bit more um, and even if I just get interested and I go on like Wikipedia to, to find some other things I'm like you know what I you know I sort of fell off the wagon I don't think that this was a bad use of my time because I'm following an interest but I will recognize that that was a tendency that I had and I move on like it's it, part of this in my view is just recognizing the problem rather than just saying it's like oh you know i've just got a short attention span i can't read stuff anymore so do you have any uh a french canadian friend that want their own country no uh i and i know a couple of people who did vote for the uh the bloc quebecois uh and the party quebecois because they they thought that they aligned with their politics and they thought that uh separatism was a dead issue I thought that was a dangerous game that they were playing, but so far as I can tell, um, 
that issue is dead for the foreseeable future in Quebec. Doesn't mean that it can't come back. It just means that it's there was a there was a pretty big shift in Quebec politics. Largely, that was driven by the dissolution of that that political party. Oh, no worries, Domi. I mean, these things happen, right? For a true follower of the rule of St. Benedict, the importance of saying prayers and studying the Bible, uh, at least my priest says so. Uh, however, while doing penance for days on end, I struggle to stay focused. Hey, this is appropriate. Sometimes I feel that I'm just sitting here doing nothing. If I closed my eyes for just a moment, surely that would not be so bad. If I am getting tired, I must double my efforts. So we gotta wait for uh, this invasion to finish, but I do not remember falling asleep, but suddenly I realized I was sprawled across the floor. Apparently I'd crashed on top of my copy of the Bible because once I struggled to my feet, I noticed that its pages were torn and that I had some ink smeared across my face. No matter how hard I tried, I could not wash it off. Surely my servants are gossiping about my failure and soon everyone will know. <laughs> I, <can laughs> I am a rampant sinner. Everything seems so hard to do, not really worth the effort. I have gained the slothful trait. Now, I should be able to deal with that. There's got to be something that I can do here, so... Um... I can take a vow of celibacy. Eh, 42. It's a little early. Mind you, my wife's 42, so... How mad is my wife gonna be if I take a vow of celibacy? Uh, to Commissus Adamero, I've heard some disturbing tales regarding your time in holy seclusion. Uh, Commissus, I fear that you are not ready yet for the contemplation I expected of you. We will revisit this mission at a later date, but for the time being, I must consider this a failure. Funny thing is, you can read school books reasonably fine, but when you try to read a novel that you really want to, you struggle. I mean, it's... I have not... Whoa! I'm neglecting my lands. Okay, so we'll head to Treviso, and then we will kick the crap out of Storla's host. And then we'll probably call it a night. Uh, Milady is very good at intrigue, it looks like. Speaking of weight, did you ever get to have babies or not? We did. We had uh, four babies. Only three of them made it, though. So we got two strapping young boys. Um, and we've got uh, a daughter. And I'm assuming at 42, my wife will not be supplying any more of the, the younglings. Okay, as always, let's... Uh, Arrange the general. Defenders of Padova uh, launched an unsuccessful raid against the besiegers, taking heavy losses in the attempt. Well, that's a shame. Okay, so we're coming on to November. How about we say when the clock ticks over to 8.94, uh, we'll call it over. Uh, Murr was captured in battle and is now my prisoner. Let's chase them back to Scandinavia. Um, let's make you... Well, he's timid. Uh, yeah, we'll make you a learner. I don't really want to help with this because I kind of want this for my own. All right, they're running off, so. There are mysteries, many mysteries in the Catholic faith. It might be interesting to spend some time delving into the old texts of the Bible. 
I will dedicate more time to reading the scriptures. Uh, who else do we have? Somebody said goodnight. Um, Billy Green, have a great night. Thank you very much for stopping by and the follow. Uh, I don't think I... If I missed any of your uh, messages in chat, I apologize. Oh, hey, we're in January, so I am saying goodnight as well. Uh, I usually have a long goodbye, so for those of you who are looking for more Crusader Kings, obviously feel free to click the button down below. It'll show you the other people playing it. I don't have any personal recommendations of Crusader Kings 2 streamers, but usually more people are pop, uh, playing the game with me whenever there's... Uh, sorry, than me uh, whenever a new patch is out, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble. I will say, though, I do always host somebody at the end, so if you'd like to see some of the people I like to watch, feel free to hang out for a little bit. Um... I, however, am going to end the way that we normally do. We'll do a quick recap of what happened. So this didn't have a lot of action. Uh, one of the big reasons for this was that when we fought for Istra, we pretty much captured the king right away. Uh, it was a very short battle. So the main things that we tried to accomplish, again, rebuild our army, and we're more or less at capacity. Uh, we wanted to fill our treasury, which is a little light right now, but we are up two hospitals. And then the one, uh, the one county that doesn't have a hospital is the one that I don't personally own. So I'm reasonably okay with that. Uh, we were able to preserve our trading routes. That's good. Uh, we didn't, we got, gained one new relic, which is also worth remembering. So we have the finger of St. John, a magnificent painting, and a saint's finger bone. Uh, it's unlikely that we will be getting a magnum opus out of uh, Adamero the Just. Uh, but we will have a pious and good man. And more importantly, I just rather like the fact that you know, this guy sort of stays in his lane. He he kind of knows what he's about. <laughs> um, and as try as as he might, he just couldn't make the penance work. And so has unfortunately gained slothful. Um, so I sort of like the fact that this guy, you know, he's he's kind of the hero that Verona needs, <laughs> not deserves. Um, it'd be great if this guy could be a badass like the previous one, but in this case he's actually, he's one of these people who like never gets credit for how competent, competent he was while uh, running things. <laughs> Grand Admiral Thrawn, thank you very much for evening out to 10 bits tonight. I really appreciate that. It's been a delight having you in the chat. As with all of you, uh, we've got Billy Green, we've got Bite of Cat. I'm trying to find some of the other uh, sort of less familiar names inside of chat. Silver Tongue, uh, Shaman Zombie, and then of course the regulars. We've got uh, Eyes of Sin, we've got Captain Shield 616, who's definitely been, it's, I think you've got like an unbroken attendance record ever since you first found the cast. That's amazing. I don't have that dedication to channels. Um, honestly, guys, though, thank you very much for that. Um, I will say, uh, so we, I mean, again, this guy is, nobody's going to write sort of a great epic around him, but he's actually a very capable ruler who was able to expand the family holdings, was able to bring great prosperity to the realm, uh, was able to pay off the debts and just generally manage stuff. Things did not break under him, and we've actually acquired a substantial amount of wealth uh, under this guy, which is... Uh, Easy to take for granted, but that's not why you're here. Uh, we are here so that we can read the Chronicle. So first of all, we'll see how we compare. So the Adamini family currently at a score of 15,471. With a score of 15,471, we beat House Wealth, a dynasty very much down on its luck in 1066. By 1100, all that had changed. Control of two of the most powerful duchies in Germany and substantial lands in Italy made them one of the second most powerful families in Germany after the Hohenstaufen. One member of the Wealth family would, ever, uh, would even gain the title of Emperor, but in the struggles would also weaken the family and much of the lands would be lost. The family would consolidate its holdings in northern Germany as Dukes of Brunswick and remain a player in imperial politics. So we have just enough room for the entire family. We began with Count Adamero of Verona, ruled for 33 years, uh, as did Adamero the Younger, uh, but with less prestige and piety by the end of it. Count Gaimar only lasted five years, although I would say on a per year basis did okay for himself as far as scores, and of course we've also got Hildrek who suffered a short rule as well. 
Duke Orson uh, was the evil Satanist. Um, he pretty much accomplished, well, he actually accomplished a lot, and but he, you know, he did not do well as far as the prestige and piety is concerned. He was a terrible person who got, it was a very exciting playthrough, but it was definitely a, um, <clears throat> It was not a successful one. Duke Gundold was really the golden boy, uh, has the highest score out of everyone, but his life was cut short when he went on an ill-fated journey, uh, was thrown into the prison, in, was thrown into prison in the, uh, the Byzantine Empire and thrown into the Oubliette when he asked for better accommodations. And so Duke Adamero, his Benedictine and generally less talented, you know, you would not expect very much of this person at the beginning, um, but was someone to sort of bring the family back quietly uh, into a position of stability and may actually wind up uh, outdoing his more uh, colorful predecessor as far as an overall, uh, an overall uh, score. Um, nobody here uh, is a mod. I've got a couple of subscriber badges, but no, no mods here tonight, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. And, of course, we will read the continuing chronicle of the House Adamini. Uh... All right. In 881, Duke Adamero freely won the war against Duchess Guntrude of Carthinia, and he usurped the Duchy of Carthinia from Guntrold. Uh, I believe this was before we started the playthrough. In 881, uh, Gildaf, the firstborn son to Duke Adamero of Fruli. In 882, Fruli saw an unusually bountiful harvest this year. In 883, a dragon was seen in Treviso. In 884, the earth shook for three days in Verona, killing 200 peasants and a priest. In 885, Duke Adamero of Fruli, through deeds and character, came to be known as Duke Adamero the Just. In 886, he went to war against uh, King Artavadas of Croatia. Yeah, that's not how you pronounce that. Of Croatia. And in 886, he also usurped the, country, uh, the county of Istra uh, because he was able to capture the king. 887, tens of thousands of crows' birds invaded Treviso just before the harvest, causing much damage to the farmers' fields. In 888, a ten-foot-tall woman was crucified in the county of Treviso. In the spaghetti, thank you very much for the host. We're actually just wrapping up tonight, but thank you very much for that. 889, strange and wonderful serpents were seen in Padua. In 890, strange and wonderful serpents then migrated to Aqu uh, Aquilia. In 891, an uncommonly great number of children were born this year in Mantua. In 892, Duke Adamero of Fruli made a pious pilgrimage to Rome, and at the end of 893, several people in Verona spoke of seeing strange shapes dancing on the moon. Uh, most importantly, though, we can reflect on our treasury, our prestige, our piety, and our growing holdings. So, thank you everybody. If you want to see more of me, uh, I will just remind you that there is going to be the Elder Scrolls playthrough, which comes up tomorrow. That's going to be 7 o'clock Eastern sharp if you would like a reminder you can follow this link inside of chat here um this is continuing on the adventure this is chapter 12 of the elder scrolls arena and i do do something resembling a dark elf voice from morrowind um if that's not your sort of thing, normally I will stream on Wednesday. I will very likely not be streaming this Wednesday because it is the third Wednesday of the month, which means that I'm normally at uh, I'm normally at Dirty Rectangles in Ottawa. That's a local video game dev collective full of interesting people at an interesting bar, and I get to find out what all the cool people are doing. So I'm uh, I hope that you uh, you don't um, you don't hold that against me. Um, not so sure I'm going to be able to do Surviving Mars on Avod on Thursday, but I will announce that on Twitter if I can. But we will be back uh, to the regular schedule on Friday. I will very likely be doing the next uh, War Story of Battlefield Five. If you have not seen them, the War Stories are very entertaining. Uh, so I do recommend that you, you stick around for that. But of course, Battlefield is not everybody's uh, cup of tea, so uh, as always, it's, uh, it's understandable if you don't. If you're only here for Crusader Kings, that will be continuing on Monday, this exact same save, so we are still on the old patch, 2.8.3.4. We'll continue on to the very end unless I wind up, you know, if I get a copy of Holy Fury, obviously I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna put it behind the, the wall. 
Um, but I'm not going to go out of my way uh, to obtain it right now. I'll, I'll probably maybe pick it up after I've done this playthrough or something like that. Um, but uh, I don't know. if un Unless there's sort of an external force that compels me to, to play it, I think it's probably just as fun to, to continue on with the story of the House of Adamini. Um, and Domi, that is a very nice thing of you to say. So in the spaghetti, I don't see you in chat right now, but again, I really appreciate that host. Uh, maybe I'll, I hope I get a chance to catch you, uh, next time. Um, but again, thank you guys for, uh, for your very kind words. This was a lot of fun. You've been very generous with your hosts, your bits, your donations, your company. Um, and, uh, as always, I know some of you are going through some tough times, so I hope this at least brought a little bit of mirth. Um, don't hesitate to reach out uh, whatever way works best for you, and I will do my best to at least give you a reassuring word. Um, but if nothing else, uh, you'll see a recorded me on Tuesday, and I'll see the rest of you on Friday. Let's uh, send it over to Ponce, who hosted me not too long ago. He's currently... well, it says he's playing League of Legends, but I actually think he's playing Slay the Spire. So, uh, If you want to use the raid message, you can say, We're tired of System Talk, heard this place was better. I know Ponce reasonably well. I knew him in Vancouver. Um, whether he's playing League of Legends or whether he's playing Slay the Spire, he's a bunch of fun to watch. A definitely very relaxed streamer. And uh, I definitely recommend uh, hanging out for at least for a little bit to see if it's your kind of thing. Have a good night, everybody. I'm going to stop talking now and uh, leave you with Ponce.